I have to fix my hair because I've just put my headphones on in a rush because I've just come back from the toilet. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. If you could all hit like, comment, subscribe, share. Thank you. Appreciate you all. How's everyone doing today? Six people in chat. Four people now. Rest in peace. I um, want to do a quick shout out to the Bug Factory. The link is in the description. Sponsor of the podcast. Check them out. Appreciate the appreciate the love and support that those guys at the Bug Factory have been showing me. Sustainably growing mealworms worldwide. And the cheapest bugs um, online in the UK. Use discount code Pools at Monitors 5 to get 5% off your first order of bugs. And they're already the cheapest bugs. But let's see who's in chat before we introduce the guest. We have a very exciting guest for you today. So, Mike, coming in first. He wins this week's race. Wow, it's Paul's monitors in chat. How lucky. Da -da -da. Hello, Ben. Hello, all. Hey, hey, hey. Who else we got in chat? What's up, Dan? Appreciate you stopping by. Oh, ho, ho. we've got the big boy in chat. Scandinavian Guana's the man himself. How are you doing, mate? I hope you're good. Um, Serenity Dragons, hello. We've got Father Blue. We've got a couple of big names in the house today. So we are made it back from the curry house just in time. Well, on that, just in time for today's guest. So a few months ago, let me set the scene for everybody. A few months ago, I found, scrolling through Instagram, found this page, this guy with a couple of cool lizards. Fee in chat. So yeah, anyway, found found this guy on Instagram with a couple of um couple of cool lizards. I was like, oh cool. I was I was a mere humble podcast at the time. He was a mere humble, humble little tree monitor keeper at the time. And I messaged him. I was like, hey, fancy coming on my podcast? He was like, yeah, I'd love to come on your podcast. And there we were. And now, ever since then, he has collected all the infin infinity stones and has all of the tree monitors. So I have. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to announce Mr. Parker's Park. Hello. Hi guys. <laughs> How are you doing, mate? You right? <laughs> yeah, man. Doing good. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's good, good to have you back. Again. You're yeah, the first thanks, returning guest on the Captive Raptors podcast. Awesome. Honored to be go. the first return. <laughs> Here we go. I was excited to get you back because, again, if I say so myself, humbly, I sort of like, I was like, yeah, you're cool when you were like, not famous and now everyone's like wow he's the guy and i was just like yep well i liked him when he wasn't so he likes me now <laughs> so. no, of course no yeah man i've always appreciated your your friendship and your support bro yeah you were the you were the first person to like reach out to me to do really anything before yeah so. no, i i remember like, i hope you don't mind me sharing but i remember like our conversation after the first podcast i was the one that said to you just post every day like you're so passionate your stuff's cool like just post 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 Look at you now. Yeah, man. No, yeah, you you were a huge <laughs> motivation for me, bro. Yeah. I mean, I still still got a long way to go to even get close to like your level. And, oh, don't mate. I'm, 8, I'm a nobody. You've, I'm dude, a nobody. you've grown you've grown a ton since the last time we talked. Like your, yeah, your Instagram's been blowing up, man. Yeah, I've been doing all right on socials, but you know, reptile collections, like you've you've surpassed anything I'm ever gonna achieve. But we'll <laughs> we'll get into that for sure, man. We'll get into no, that. No, I thank you, man. Thank you. I, I appreciate <laughs> the praise. I appreciate it. So just just quickly, we'll get more into it, but just a quick summary, who you are for people that don't know, who you are and what you keep. And then we've got some different from last time. We've got some quick fire questions and then we'll get officially properly into the podcast. Cool. Um, all right. So I'm I'm Parker. My name's Parker, uh, but I go by Parker's Park on Instagram. Uh, I'm a reptile keeper. Primarily, I keep lizards, uh, but I also have three turtles and two snakes now. Um, but lizards are my favorite by far and my favorite lizards definitely I'd have to say are tree monitors. I have now, I've lost count. I have 13 tree monitors now. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm, I have pairs of each of them, of each species, uh, except for the cordensis. I have a male that isn't in my possession yet, but will be in the next couple weeks. Um, other than that, I also keep uh, Shinosaurus crocodilaris. I, for, I'm super bad at pronouncing Latin names. Let me start Shinosaurus that out. crocodiliatus. There you go. That one. <laughs> I call them shinies <laughs> or Chinese crocodile lizards. That's the common name for them. Um, I also have a pair of uh, Lanthanotus borneensis. What do you want Or uh, borne. There you go. <laughs> and thank you, Paul. And uh, or the Borneo earless monitor and Sick. love those guys to death. Those are probably those are up there with tree monitors for me. I love all my lizards like like they're my children, but 
the two that's the two species that stand out that I keep uh, are definitely the lanthos and uh, my tree monitors. But um, yeah, I also have bearded dragons. Uh, I have an Aki monitor. I have a legless lizard. I also keep a number of iguanas. I love iguanas. Uh, I haven't gotten. I don't really have a lot of projects with them, um, but they're they're more just my my comfort animals, which is kind of funny because people think of green iguanas as uh, like crazy spaz animals, but I have four of them. Only one of them's a little 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 temperamental. Um, all the other ones are like puppies. And yeah, I, I I just have a passion for reptiles. I hope to one day be a big breeder and be able to make this my passion uh, or my my career because it is my passion. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good, mate. Just um, advice someone told me uh, ages ago is when you're saying Latin names, just say it with your chest, like you know what you're talking about. Like the, <laughs> the problem is, like I know you guys call them, uh, for example, green tree monitors. Americans tend to call them Prasinus. Mm-hmm. Whereas I call them Prasinus. I say Prasinus too. Yeah, so what I I've heard them as pra- and then same as like there's Bohemii, Bohemi, mm-hmm. but like and then you get Bakari, Becari, mm-hmm. Rosingeri, Rosingeri. Mm-hmm. Who who knows? So just yeah, say yes. The tree monitors are the ones that I feel fairly confident on because uh, Cody Cop, a good friend yeah. of mine, he gave me kind of a, a crash course on how to say most of them. He seems to have them down. So like I say, Varanus Bomii. That's how he okay. was. He was saying the the guy that discovered him was named Bomi. So okay. it, if they uh, if they made it into a Latin name, it'd be Bomii. Or I don't. I, I don't, I'm not. I'm not very good yes. at English. I, w- I wasn't very good at English in school so <laughs> let, let alone Latin. let alone yeah. Latin. yeah no same as i said that in a podcast with um stefan from the terrarium channel he he speaks like latin like it well latin species like it's fluent and i was no just point. like i'll keep lizards <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah i just i uh, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah right <laughs> it's it's tough to tough to pronounce them for sure I've, I've got a banner for this i believe this is very i was i'm supposed to be prepared but i was too busy talking to you um everyone just ignore this i'll cut this out even though i won't because it's live okay quick fire questions nope that's the wrong one quick fire questions <laughs> <laughs> um so it's basically yes or no but not yes or no um if you want to explain you can but if not just short sharp one answers so first one you've already answered, but we're going to start with it. Snakes or lizards? Lizards. Money or time? Time. Mentally strong or physically strong? Mentally. Wild caught good, wild caught bad? Mm, that's a tough one. Uh, depends. Depends on the intentions. If you're taking, I'll elaborate on this one a little bit. If you're taking animals, I believe if you're, because most of my tree monitors are wild caught. However, I would say I'm pretty much against like a lot of the, a lot of the quotas and the way they, they export and deal with animals that way. Um, I, yeah, I'd say as long as you're taking them out of the wild with the intention of boosting the numbers in captivity and reproducing them, and then just like taking from those individuals once they're established in captivity i think that's good but i think it's bad to to be doing like what's kind of happening with the blue tree monitors right now where they're just like shipping them into the u.s in masses and i mean they're from such a small region um such a small island to begin with like there's not many of them so it's kind of sad to see that side of it but yeah sorry no i no no you're good i agree mate i 100 agree i think wild caught in an ideal world should be in um shouldn't be in pet only homes um especially if they're a rare species but we can get into that in a bit um where was i pro snake rack or no snake rack no snake rack if it's an adult snake if it's a hatchling snake i'd say that's okay like depending uh, as long as it's got lighting and you know some i've seen some so good snake not a rack now. then <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's true that's true actually i'll say i'll say no snake rack no snake rack uh, arid species or tropical species tropical pigs or goats mm, goats they're fine no, I'm, this isn't in there but i'm gonna ask pygmy <laughs> goats or full-size goats uh probably pygmy goats they're cute do goat yoga <laughs> respect um 
big reptiles <clears throat> or small reptiles? Can I say medium size? I like big, medium size. Big or small? Big or small? Uh, big, or small. Big, big. 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 Um, big monitors or dwarf monitors? Big monitors. Gotta Instagram famous <clears throat> or YouTube famous? YouTube famous. Me too. Trying. We're not there yet. Yeah. Hey, you, <laughs> you've, got, you've gotten a lot. I was just checking it out this morning. You have what, like 1.35 now or something? Yeah, 1.366 last time I checked. Dang, man. Yeah. Getting up getting there. there. That's awesome. Yeah, Heck we're yeah. still we're still not making that YouTube ad revenue yet, but we're getting there. We're closing It'll come. It'll yeah, come. We'll, I'm not worried, mate. We'll we'll get in there slowly. Um yeah, good stuff. Okay, referring to the shoes. Pro crocs or no crocs? Pro crocs. I need to get myself some. I've been We're seeing good. the videos. We, They've we can talk. Me. It's fine. We yeah. can continue this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle monitors without Crocs. It's wrong. It's the facts of life. So, I do it. I do it barefoot. I should get myself some Crocs though, for sure. If you do that with like the lizards I work with, you'll have no toes. So Ooh, yeah, no, true. Yeah, very true. Those right, I've Riddler, seen. I've seen those videos. <laughs> no, you need to like. Oh, is that even Riddler? That's not Riddler. Oh, it just looked the same. Oh, God. I'm sorry, Riddler. Oh, no, it was Riddler. The chat lagged. Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. Sorry, Parker. This is very unprofessional of me. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, you're good. Okay, that was meant to be Riddler, but also <clears throat> um, Serenity Dragons. Okay, Feisty or Tame? Tame. Wild types or Morphs? Wild types. And there you go. That's the hot seat question. So... Let's just start off where we left off. I think I should have watched it back, but I'm unprofessional. You had three tr three blue trees, so a pair and a young male. Uh, yeah, I had a pair, a pair and a young female. I had my pair of uh, yellows and blacks. Yeah, yeah, I had just yeah. got the pair of blacks, pair of yellows, pair of blacks. Um, yeah. And one and lantanotis. You just and got one it. lantanotis. Yes. Yeah, you just got yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So since <laughs> since our last podcast, which is only like four months ago, yeah, I've been busy. Yeah. I've definitely been busy. I've gotten uh, let's see, I've gotten I got another lantho. I got a female lantho. Um, the, the so the first let me start. I say I have a pair of lanthos. I'm like ninety five percent sure because uh, my first lantho that I got was a baby, and uh, as he's grown, I see more male attributes i'd say but it's pretty tough with those guys because there's just not many keepers and there's not much information yeah uh, i do have a couple of friends that i've um kind of reached out to and seen pictures of theirs more frequently yeah and i would so i would say that i think mine's a male but we'll see i just don't 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 call me a liar if it ends up being a female <laughs> um if you but the end of the world yeah hey i Three's three's a lucky number. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't complain about having three lanthos for sure. I'll, I'll try and not. find an. There's there's they've become a lot more prevalent on the market since then too. Like uh, I think there's still a couple on Morph Market. If I'm I haven't checked in a couple weeks, I'd say. Yeah. Um. Definitely. But yeah, so I got that. I got that lantho. I got a pair of shinies, uh, or Chinese crocodile lizards. I got two Williams Eye. Uh, geckos. Oh, nice. I love yeah. those. I love those guys. I need to post them more. Yeah, uh, you need to post more full stop, but you just don't post enough. But we'll get into that in a bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's just that's that's been recently, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, I also got a trio of uh Amazon redheaded river turtles. Uh, they're cool. Podecimus. I'm not even gonna try to say the second word. I, of that. I haven't got a clue. So <laughs> my friend, this one. my friend Mason's tried to tried to pronounce it a hundred times to me, and I just it can't stick in my head. Um, but those guys are really cool. Those are the first aquatic turtles I've had, or turtles in general. Um. They're they're awesome. Love the love them. And then I got a pair of Bomi Eye shortly after that. That's probably the biggest the biggest thing that I've gotten. Uh, love those guys. Uh, if for those in the chat, uh, Varanus Bomi Eye is uh, the common name is the Golden Speckled Tree Monitor or the Golden Spotted Tree Monitor. Um, and yeah, I love those guys. So I got them probably what two months ago now, a little yeah. over two months, I'd say. And uh, so when I first got them, they were great. They were probably my best tempered tree monitors that showed up. And that had me like over the moon because if I wanted any of my tree monitors that showed up to be like that good, it would be them <laughs> yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah, so I got, they were both 
kind of skinny. They weren't like super skinny. The female was pretty roughed up though. She had she had a scar on her face. She had some scars under her arms um, or like open wounds more rather. And uh, she was pretty skinny. So I started giving her a lot of food just to kind of bulk her up. Um, and then probably about three to four weeks later, I noticed within like a five day period, her stomach just like blew up. And I was like, all right, this girl's cycling. Yeah. Like I, I can yeah. tell this girl's cycling. And uh, like a day before that, I had just got uh, like met and started talking to uh, Cody Cop, uh, who's become a pretty good friend of mine now. <clears throat> and uh, so I sent him pictures. I was like, I think this girl is cycling. Like, tell me, like, confirm this for me, please. Yeah. And he's like, dude, put the mail in there right now. So next day, um, their enclosures that I had built, they were side by side and they had a tunnel, um, like a hole, basically just a hole in both walls and they were scooted up against each other. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And then I just Velcroed uh, like a piece of PVC over the over the both sides of the holes. And uh, so I opened that up within three days. The male found her. They were like, I could tell the male was chasing her around, trying to like pin her down and stuff I'm like, oh, boy. So I went to PetSmart, got those those Waze cameras. I think you have those. Um, I've got a similar one. Camera. I've got a blink. Yeah. Got you. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I put those in there, started watching them. Sure enough, I woke up. I think it was day seven of them being paired up and they were locked up like fully nice. on the wall so I was freaking out i left um or this was before i had the camera sorry this was right before i had the camera and they I, when i was home they were locked up for two hours but they like when i had woken up they were already locked up so i'd imagine it could have been even earlier in the morning and yeah. i had to leave so i could have i imagine it was probably later in the day because then uh nine days after that lock i think um they locked up again and this time i had the camera on them and they locked up for literally i think it was 11 hours straight Jesus and God. yeah they like they were going at it they took yeah. two breaks for like 20 minutes and then they were just <laughs> right back to it and like yeah it, he was yeah. switching sides on her so like <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm really yeah, yeah. i'm really hopeful i get some some fertile eggs from her because she's been growing fantastically she eats like a champ i give her quail pretty much every day and yeah. then uh like a rodent every now and then because i'm really trying to make sure she has enough nutrients especially considering she was pretty underweight um, yeah of course yeah before let me know if you hear some sort of rumbling i think the washing machine just turned on so nice no, you're good okay <laughs> um but uh yeah so and then just today i pulled the mail because it had been i think today was day 16 or 17 since the lock um and with the help of Co cody cody's helped me like really get a timeline of what i should expect and like how i should go about like pulling out the mail uh when i should expect to see the eggs uh stuff like that so i'm really thankful to, to him for that help because i've i've read just about every study you can find out there on the internet and talk to a lot of people i've talked to a lot more people now um that i've started an instagram which has really been beneficial a lot more beneficial than i thought and um yeah it's 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 going good so I, i'm really really hopeful and confident that i'm gonna get some fertile eggs uh from from my female bomei yeah so that's What's probably the, the um, biggest development gestation is it similar to like um mccray and prasinus is it yeah it's it's the same um so like 28 I mean, 33 days somewhere right yeah. around there yeah. yeah so from from the initial cycle um from the initial time you start seeing like the swelling of vitilogenesis uh you should expect like 10 to 15 days after that is when vitilogenesis is like probably for sure done yeah and they're actually that's grab well they're actually uh, class is gravid at that point and the eggs are in yeah. the um they've already fertilized been and done and she's no longer receptive so there you're getting eggs after that point whether you well, like it or not actually at that it's the point right outside of it from from what cody is explaining to me um it's the point right outside of vitilogenesis that is actually where she's the receptive um to actually fertilize the egg so sometimes they can lock up too early where that's where i think that first lock i think it might have been a little bit too early yeah and then 10 days later um she was for sure like the eggs were done and dropped down and then he was ready to uh or not not the eggs themselves the, i think it, it's just the yolk process i need to look this back up I'm, yes <laughs> I'm... my understanding of it is the start of vitilogenesis is the swell which yes. is basically the yolk um depositing 
ready yes. to be fertilized so that's about a day depending on the species that's about a day then they slim right back down so the yolk comes down swells up so they yep. swell up um last about a day easy to miss so if you're working that day or you're busy you'll miss it um then after that they are receptive but they don't tend to breed until about five to six days after that yes and then after that five to six days you've got roughly about five to ten days you're talking about day 10 to 15 um and then like you say then that's fertilogenesis effectively the yolk dip depulsion over and yeah. then the then they start to pass into the ovaries and then they start to calcify so that at that point they can no longer be fertilized yep um and then they'll pass down obviously the fallopian tubes and then that's when they start to swell up swell up because the eggs are collecting and starting to calcify so then they swell up swell up swell up and then they go off food five to well sometimes they don't but five to six days before they lay um hips start to sink tail base starts to sink fingers crossed you get eggs that's my understanding of it anyway yep yeah bingo yeah i, I misunderstood what you're saying at first my bad um yeah so that that is yeah that's pretty much what i'm expecting i've been seeing all of that um so i'm expecting in the next two weeks probably is when she's likely to drop them nice um her appetite's still good which is good but her tail base is starting to divot a bit um same with her back legs but her stomach is gigantic so hopefully yeah, she I... gives me a decent size i'm probably going to keep half of whatever the clutch size is that i get unless it's an odd number i'll keep the larger half um, yeah man you need to keep as many as you can for sure mm -hmm. yeah don't get me I... wrong one or two so just definitely to recuperate some costs for sure yeah that's but... that's that's the idea because yeah. this uh <laughs> funny enough these would be the uh these would be the first reptiles or animals i've ever bred there we go. So the question was, is this the first time breeding a tree monitor or have you had yeah. success with it? But there we go. No, yeah, I uh, I got a I got an unfertile egg from my uh, Bakari female probably a month and a half ago. I got well, I got two, actually. That was a whole ordeal, um, but I, I never saw them lock. So I, I have a plan for them now. But um, yeah, you've got I... yellows looking yellow they or... they're showing signs so when i pair so I, they, I had them separate for the new enclosures so hold on actually let me go back <laughs> so uh, the big reason i've been uh not posting on instagram is because i've been like slaving away day and night trying to get all these new enclosures done yeah, uh, yeah. for all the tree monitors so right now i mean I have... that's a good transition if you want to do what you want to do yeah yeah exactly yeah i it, it was time i kind of had a moment where i was looking i was just kind of standing in my reptile room looking at everything and like i, just, I don't know I, I i wasn't happy with the enclosures i had at the time and i had no way to separate the lizards or anything like that so i just was like screw it i i went to my my good friend uh camo cages or uh, bailey cooper is his name yeah. and look him up on instagram camo cages best enclosures if you live in the u.s <laughs> you can ship um but um anyways so um i went to him i was like listen i want like 10 three foot by three foot by five foot enclosures for my tree monitors and i want holes i told him what i wanted i want I, so i put holes in both walls one for a lay box for the females <clears throat> and then one for a connecting tunnel um because i do like to separate them i i personally think it's more natural and I think when it comes to breeding, I think it's it depends on people. I, I don't think there's really one like surefire way to say like this is how you breed this species. Like I think it more depends on the individual pair you have, and yeah. I feel it's more up to the breeder and or the keeper himself to like really read his pair and understand. Really read the female, honestly. I mean, it, in almost all monitor cases, the females are the ones that are going to control uh, all the cycling, all the all the locking, the whole breeding process. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, she's going to have the eggs, so but um I think it's more important to do I think there's different tools and different things you can do to help like say kick a female into a cycle or make a male more interested in a female. Um, cause like I had my yellows paired up for eight months and I never saw any signs of breeding whatsoever. And then I separated them for a month and a half, two months, mm -hmm. maybe pair them back up. And that's when I, that's what you were seeing on my, on my story. So I, I paired them back up. The female went into his enclosure and, uh, 
immediately he like kind of pounced not like pounced on her but like ran up to her and was like pinning her down and stuff now yeah. since then every time the male sees her he goes for it however what sucks and i knew this was a possibility um my female yellow tree is my most nervous tree monitor by far like she's the most nervous one i've ever seen and even talking to other people like most people don't have to deal with how how nervous of a tree monitor this girl is um but like i think that they're i don't know it's risky because i know i think i'm pretty sure she was cycling because she also started to show the same signs my female bomi i uh, was showing as yeah. i started i started slamming her with quail uh to really boost that nutrition and i don't know they they haven't locked up yet but i feel like we're getting outside the window of um of her uh, like of losing my train of thought sorry i feel like it, we're kind of getting outside of itelogenesis i feel like the eggs are probably starting to calcify at this point um based yeah, on how long they, it's they been breed. yeah they exactly breed. so even if they breed it's not gonna fertilize the eggs um, yeah which is okay but it, I, I needed to i needed to get them upgraded to the the new enclosures and at the very least i I'm 99% sure that that female yellow tree is cycling and I know how I caused it. So for the future, I can learn from this experience and then hopefully get them all, all locking up and stuff. So my question is, are you going to share what you did to get her to cycle or is it a top secret secret? No, I mean, it's not even, um, yeah, I'll share. So here's my honest thoughts on, um, how I got, I think there's different things you can do and mm -hmm. I'll share. I don't. I don't think anybody that's told me would mind. Or anyone. you don't have to say who told you what. Um. Yeah. Um. But I've taken a lot from from different people that I've talked to. So like, I'm mm -hmm. not just. I, I never really just take. I never really just like take what someone says and like immediately do it. I always kind of have to have an understanding. I'm the kind of person that really likes. Like, I'm a very fact based person, and I really try to try to mimic nature because like when you really think about it, it's like there's no reason that these animals shouldn't be breeding in captivity unless they're unhappy. Like that's the last thing that they're going to do is breed if they're unhappy at all. So I think it's important. I think the most important thing in breeding is just keeping your animals happy, especially your female though. Um, so one thing that I really think like really helps has like helped me at this point, it's been a long road and I've kind of ruined some of the relationships at this point, but I've put like, so much effort and time into socializing all 13 that I have and mm -hmm. all 13 of mine, even the new ones that I have, I, I can tong feed and like lure them onto my arm. I can get close to them with my hand and pet them to a degree. Some are a little testier than others. Everyone, every, I know the boundaries of every single tree monitor I have essentially. Yeah. And I always try to try to avoid that to keep them as happy as can be, especially my females, because my females as per like almost all lizards are um like females are usually going to be the more more testy more nervous um of the male of the two mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but so basically what i've started doing to like really kick my when i want to kick my females into a cycle is really just slam them with food like just slam them with a crap ton of food but now here's the thing so far yeah. that has worked for me um for the black tree female, the yellow tree female, and the female bomei, which are the three that I've tried it on. Now, I also do think that cooling down the pairs is a big factor, not only for the females to kick into a cycle, um, but for more the males. Not more the males, but I think it depends. I think that the males, though, it really helps more than um, what a lot of people would think, because I've observed my males like just not be interested at all and like the black tree male and he's is he's my most relaxed tree monitor like he's i can't open his enclosure door without him jumping on my head and crawling down my back or like like he's he's definitely not unhappy yeah so i think i think it could be cooling him down i think it could also be once the females kick into a cycle talks of pheromones that they give off um like that that could be something that the males are picking up on and going for that could also be why my male yellow jumped on him i basically there's not one surefire way i've done it there's like a bunch of different things i'm kind of trying and observing what i see um yeah. but as of for right now all i did was slam them with food like all i've done is just slam my females with food 
I start seeing that swelling. Um, it could also be that I, we were just in winter in, uh, and in uh, Arizona, it's pretty, pretty, uh, drastic changes in weather once it's from winter to summer. So even, even though I was keeping their enclosures the same, like my bedroom where the bomi eye are at or the reptile room here, um, it was colder than it would be. Plus the air pressure is different. So they could have sensed that as well. Yeah. I don't know. I basically what I'm trying to say, <laughs> sorry for my rambling. No, no, is, you're good. You're good. <laughs> um, is I think there is a lot more factors to, I think, I think there's a lot more factors playing into each individual animal breeding rather than in like the species as a whole. Like, I think you have to observe each animal itself if you really want to like Do you have think... success breeding year round yellows blacks greens blues we won't well we'll count um behemi because obviously you have them so those and cordos whatever do you think the same stimulus will trigger every single species or do you think each species outside of obviously each one being an individual um but we're talking just a species as a whole now do you think for example food do you think food will trigger every single species or do you think it might work for four and not for the five or do you yeah. think they've got their own little subtle tells or. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like the, I like this question a lot. So I, that's okay. This is that, that kind of is giving me the ability. Sorry. I, sometimes I have a hard time explaining like exactly no, what I'm thinking. I that's think what I'm here for. Things. So I'll try and steer yeah. your shit. Thank you. So, um, yeah. So that's a great question. So I think there is a baseline there is baseline things that you have to do to get a female to start cycling in general, like across the board for any lizard, but especially monitors. Yeah. Um, so first off there's environmental stimulus and there's food stimulus is one that is like, like no matter what food stimulus has to be the answer, because think of if you were a female lizard running through the wild, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your, your innate, um, your innate behavior is to want to, produce eggs, produce babies, get them fertilized, like, or get, produce eggs, get them fertilized, lay fertile eggs, have babies hatch out, pass on your bloodline, etc. Yeah. So, but if for, in order for a female to do that, it's very, it takes a huge toll on her body. Mm -hmm. So the only time that she's going to feel comfortable enough to do that is when she runs, stumbles across a large amount of food yeah. and it's especially monitors. Exactly. So like, let's say a tree monitor stumbles across a bird nest and there's like a bunch of birds that just hatched the perfect size for them to eat they slam they're like oh my god this is my chance they slam as many of those as they want and continue on let's say now it, yeah so i think food is one one big aspect of that but i also think environmental factors are definitely a huge thing we know that we know that like temperature changes are a big factor for a lot of uh like australian species, species yeah. just monitors in general um but what really got me thinking, um, well, first it was help from like Cody. Cody was the first one that was telling me I had all, well, he was the first one that can like told me exactly like his thoughts behind exactly why temperature changes, um, for temperature and humidity changes for tree monitors is like what would help them breed. Um, but like I had heard the theory, like I, I think even in the last podcast we had, I had said like, I'm working on either doing um, like a, a wet and a dry season yeah. or uh, a temperature change, do like a cold and a hot. Um, but you think in the wild when it rains, because obviously most people associate the wet season with the breeding season. Mm -hmm. And you would assume in the wild when it's raining, there's an abundance more of food. Dry season, animals are going to be hiding. Animals aren't going to exactly. be out as much. The wet season, frogs are going to be out. Geckos are going to be out. More bugs are going to be out. It's going to be cooler because mm -hmm. there's more cloud cover, which traps in humidity, yep. um, and then doesn't allow it to dissipate. But then also being humid does drop the ambient a little bit because obviously there's more dense air. And in the dry season, there's no cloud cover, so it all escapes. So it becomes drier, thus forth making it feel warmer. Exactly. Um, so when you look into all those stimulus accounts, uh, Father Blue, okay, I don't know if he's still in chat, but he came in the podcast last week. I I was on with my friend who breeds Brasinus and he said, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember, but 
is along the lines of three monitors in, the, in captivity will have three to four clutches a year, but in the wild, they only have one clutch a year. Mm-hmm. So what's your opinion on that? Um, so I actually talked to Father Blue about that. Um, I don't know. Here's my thoughts. I, I, I've never, I've never been to Indonesia myself and like study. yeah i said i said i don't know i i'm so before i even get you to answer i'll just say like my caveat so i said to him how do you know that and he i said, yeah yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. No, no you carry on um no yeah here's what i think i think in honesty if they if they couldn't they wouldn't you know what i mean mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i do think it could be putting a lot of strain on the female but it depends on how you space it out i would say there's no harm in like like two cl- i don't know if you're if you're doing three clutches a year and she's laying five or six eggs every clutch that's yeah. a bit much like that's a lot of that's a lot of uh strain on a female yeah a lot of stress yeah but that's another thing that i think of so in that see that was kind of one of the things that kind of made me my talk with Cody, like making me go, aha, is I was always thinking like, well, temperature changes don't make sense to me for these tree monitors because they're from Indonesia, which is like right on the equator or Mm -hmm. surrounding areas in Indonesia for all the other species. Um, But that's right on the equator. There's never going to be more than like a five degree difference throughout the year in terms of like winter and summer. However, there is going to be big fluctuations when large tropical storms come through, like what you were saying and also after that comes obviously a surplus of food so i do think that that is a big factor that plays into like if you like absolutely if you keep slamming your female with food she still won't cycle cool her down i guarantee and then then slam her with food guarantee she'll start cycling Mm -hmm. if she's comfortable and happy that is um but i don't know i i I don't really i i guess i I would need i I would want to look at the weather patterns of indonesia a bit more before i like say my for sure answer but if i were just thinking like out loud right now on the topic i feel like there's not like a there's definitely a wet and a dry season there but let's say a but there's probably like a a a freak storm that just rolls through randomly one time during the dry season right yeah. And sudden or suddenly a female stumbles across during the dry season, maybe the female stumbles across a nest, like I was saying, even yeah. though it's there's not been a storm or anything recently. She eats all that. She's like, OK, wait, I have enough energy to produce eggs. I'm going to produce more eggs. I, I, I don't know. I, I think I think it's very likely that they can produce more than just one clutch in the wild, even though we don't see it often. There's a lot of there's not a lot of study that's done on tree monitors. So it's like, there's not a lot of data to go off of to say for sure. They don't lay. I I don't know. Maybe, maybe how do you stop them though? Like how do you, cause for example, my mangrove monitor, Indonesian species, right? Solomon Mm -hmm. islands. She lays a clutch of eggs for me. She has done consistently now six times every three months. Same as tree monitors. Right. Yeah. I don't have a male. I have no gain other than hopefully parthenogenic, but I have no gain to get eggs from my female. She mm-hmm. just lays. How do yeah. I stop her? Like how I can't. Exactly. Like, and, that's, that, and that's what makes me lean more towards, because again, like I was saying, like I look at like nature as a whole, like these are like, we're not in full control of these lizards. We are trying to give them the best environment for them to do their thing. That's how yeah. I view it at least. Yeah. I think too many people view it as like, trying to control these guys like they're machines like you can just punch a code in them or do this and voila you get babies but it's way harder than that these are living animals so it's like they have they're incredibly intelligent too when we're talking about monitors but lizards and just reptiles in general have a lot more intelligence than like um than people give people them credit, give them credit for. for yeah exactly yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like right. it's it's a lot that's why i'm so big on like saying in this podcast like i think there's way more to breeding than just this and this and this that you cool them down here like it, it might not work one year and you have to like look back and say why why didn't it work right here maybe you find out oh i gave her food i had started slamming her with food a week later maybe i she just didn't have enough nutrients i don't know a number of things so probably <clears throat> i don't disagree but everyone in captivity keeps them in a constant state of food and needs. Right. So I'll answer this first and then you can give your opinion on it because obviously you're True. speaking tree monitors. For mm. Indicus, I starve mine for three months of the year. Right? And I and I mean I starve her. Mm-hmm. Does she still lay? 
yes. Mm, Do I go, oh, fuck, (laughs) she's got no stimulus, no nutrients, because I generally have fed her, like, one shrimp in the last 10 days. Mm -hmm. She still lays. Mm -hmm. So I can hand on heart for me, say, all of my monitors, regardless of the species, get a winter period where I drop the temps because it naturally drops anyway. I don't do nighttime heat. I drop the temps and then I don't feed as much and I don't spray as much. And then as we start getting into um, spring, I start to feed a little bit more, spray a little bit more. We we're just coming into summer now. So not next month, but probably June, July, August, I'll be spraying every day, feeding a lot. So they're like, boom, 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 boom. And then I'll start to drop it down in autumn. So I don't disagree because obviously some people do just feed them, feed them, feed them. I don't. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I've, st- and for example, Aki's, I can't stop them. Mm-hmm. And, and I, and I winter them for three months and same as Indicus. She mm-hmm. has laid for me consistently the last, and I, to the point where I'm getting her to, she's so consistent. And like you said about learning your females, I see the signs in her and I've pinpointed her to lay to the day twice in a row now. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> she's had a period of famine so what's your what's your basically the question will be what's your opinion on people that keep them constantly fed well for your for your mangrove i would say that kind of makes sense if like like i i mean she just sounds like she's in a very like she's happy with her environment and it sounds like she wants to she wants to get eggs that are fertilized so she keeps cycling even if like because she's just she she has probably a very good body weight, or not probably. I've seen I've seen videos of her. Yeah, she has she's a very in, she's good body in shape, weight. man. She's, exactly. I'll say so yeah. myself. She's in shape for so. sure. No, no, no. Yeah, and she and she retains a lot of that. So even if you're not feeding her a lot during the year, she probably retains a lot of that fat, and she can. She's just like, oh, I can use it. She's probably just trying to breed. I bet if you like started introducing a male, it would come yeah, back. And she as, soon, lay... as soon as I get a male, best bet. Yeah, they're going straight in. But for right now, I don't have for a male. Sure. That's that's what I'm saying. I have no. I have no horse in the race. Um, and Father Blue has yeah. literally just said, if you didn't do that, I bet you'd see a change. For Indicus, I've never tried to breed Prisinus. That's the only dream that I keep, hopefully next year, if my female is a female. But I, I get what you're saying. But this, the problem is, right, it's, it's, yeah. it's typical Captive Raptors podcast now, getting on rants. Let me, let me get all set up, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is, right, if you're mass producing animals regardless of anything you're doing it for money right Mm -hmm. matter if it's a dog it's a cat it's a bloody rat it's a lizard it doesn't matter if you're mass producing animals you're doing it for money you could love it you could adore it you could like do it for but you are doing it for money Mm -hmm. if pounding them with food is the answer then okay you're doing it for money is that going to burn your female out like for example there are certain people that breed odapter at six months old I don't agree with that at all. Will they do it? Yes, they will. Is it right? Because Damn. just because they do it in the wild? No, we've removed these animals from the wild. We're designing to give them a better life. Mm-hmm. Um, but then in the same breath, I can't bloody stop my Aki's from laying eggs. So, <laughs> you, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, exactly. No. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, it, it's a tough call. I think it's just, I think it really depends on your female. Like, I, as long as you're not burning her out, I see no problem. Like, if I have a female that's only giving me two or three eggs every time she lays, I'd probably try at least two, maybe three times a year just to get her to breed because it's not like that, that much strain on her. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, overfeeding, like, I, like, in tree monitors, that's really important with them. They, if you feed them like normal monitors where you like wait, like every every other day or two times a week or something like that and then just give them a big meal they will get overweight from that like for sure it's best to feed them how i feed all 13 of mine i give them like two jumbo dubias like the really big uh not quite adult ones but like the biggest brown ones you can imagine (laughs) um like an inch and a half probably Um, and i obviously i gut load the hell out of them but i only give them like two uh unless it's my females and i want them to cycle <clears throat> I will give them, I'll give them more insects to start the cycle off. Like I, I was giving my, I, well, I mean, I haven't done it that many times. So I'm, I'm talking like I'm, I'm all experienced, but like I've only done it a couple it's times fine, at this point. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I like to give them like all of mine eat dubia roaches, which I've, as I've talked with more people, that's not that common, which I can see why, because I 
like had to put a lot of work to get most of my tray monitors to eat dubious. Yeah. Um, I just kind of have like different ways to trick them into it now. And then <laughs> Wait, once... basically, just quickly, sorry to interrupt. Teach no, me good. your teach me your tricks because Will messaged me recently, um, and his Pilbarensis and his Argus monitor don't want to eat dubious. So, what tricks? So have you done here's I've done a few different things. So I've had like literally my male my male Bomei. I'm still like I'm in the middle of it. I've got them taking them, but I have to like put in some effort to get them to take them. Um, but primarily what I'll do is I'll find their favorite food item for all my tree monitors. It's always scrambled quail egg. It's all, or just raw quail egg. I like to do scrambled or hard boiled so I can actually put it on the tongs. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but then I have a couple different ways. You can either try dunking the roach in the egg yolk. Most people have like talked yeah. about that. And egg sometimes, works. yeah, that, that'll work a lot of the time. But I've had ones that still snub it, even if it's just covered in egg yolk. So if they still are not taking it that way, what I do is I – a lot of the times it can be the movement that freaks them out. They like no eggs and it's supposed to move. So yeah, like, what, yeah, the, yeah. What, do you, what do you have there? That's not egg. Um, so for my female yellow, actually, I couldn't get her to eat dubia for a year, literally a full year. And um, – then I found out like she, well, I knew she liked egg, but then I like really, she really started to kind of warm up and then really showed like how much she loved egg. Like she would come running across the enclosure for it. And that's the only thing she would react like that. So what I started doing is I would cook the egg really thin and then I would drape, I would kill the dubia roach so it would stop moving. Yeah. Put it on the tongs and then I drape a piece of the egg over top of the dubia. So it's like completely shielded by the egg. And then I would just put it up to her. And um, a lot of the time she'd just take it because she wouldn't be able to smell the dubia at all. And it would just be the straight egg on top. And uh, that would work a lot of the times. But then to get her off of that, what I started doing, I swear, um, I used to put it in there. <laughs> You're laughing about it already. I say. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's yeah. funny. But because I, I was laughing about it at the time because I couldn't believe it worked. Right. But she would be she would she was very she's always super hesitant. As I was saying, my female yellow is my most nervous by far. She would kind of open her mouth slowly to go down on the egg. So yeah. as she would kind of open her mouth and go down, I would flip it over so it was just the dubia roach showing, and she would just bite the dubia roach, and then I just I would keep the egg. Like <laughs> you're I just, feeding I would... tod you're feeding toddlers. Literally, See, literally here comes the aeroplane. Yep, no, exactly, yeah. <laughs> dude. I swear. Um, yeah. yeah, like some of my tree monitors, I've noticed like I can't go at them with the bug in the air. Like it has to be crawling towards them on the ground, even if it's connected yeah. to the tongs. Some of them, like there's a number of different things, um, but. Another way I've got a lot of them taking dubia is just straight up movement. So I've heard some, uh, I like, I, I don't know. I've heard some things about male dubia recently that they're very high in uric acid and you shouldn't feed them. Yeah. Have you heard that too? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. But they can be quite high in protein as well. Cause a lot of people feed them cat and dog food. That's what I, um, okay. So that's what someone yeah. told me. Yeah, yeah. I had also talked to someone that said that, but um, depends what you, it depends what you feed them. Let's exactly. put it that way. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. Okay. Yeah. Um, but basically what I would do is a lot of the times the male dubia will get them to have the taste for dubia because they have the wings. Um, for some reason, well, it makes sense because they're tree monitors. They like things that are fluttering, things that are up in the air. So I would grab the the male dubia like right by like the base of their wing. And I don't know why, but for some reason that makes them flutter like crazy. Yeah, but then yeah. that makes them think about um, makes them think like a locust because when you exactly. have a locust or or a grasshopper as you guys call them, but yeah, 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 no, exactly. Um, so that that helped a lot of them. Or I would just put it right by their face and then like because a lot of the, they wouldn't they don't like to see your hand or the tongs move, but if you can just like jiggle like kind of just send a vibration up to the very tip of the tongs yeah, and yeah, just make yeah. the bug move, sometimes that'll just make them snap on it. That's how I got my my youngest blue female and my uh, my cordensis. That's how I got them eating dubia. Yeah, yeah. And now they they crush them every time, and it's it's uh, for like right now I just have to put all the dubias like on a log, and they'll just dive bomb across the enclosure and just take them right away. So it's 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 pretty easy now. But um, but yeah, I never I've never overfed mine. I only have my male black tree, which I I've I've posted pictures of him. He's not overweight by any means, but he's a little bigger than I would like for a male to be. I like my males to be lean and mean. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Lean and mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, lean and mean. Ready to and breathe. Yeah, yeah. The females I'll keep a little bit bulkier just year round, um, just because they're females. I feel like it's good to just keep a, a some extra 
extra nutrients, extra fat on them. Yeah, they lose it if they do. If you get successful and they lay, they they lose it for sure. Like exactly, they put it in yeah, the yeah. Eggs, they go back down. You repeat yep. the cycle. So. Yeah, and see, my my female black tree, she was she got a little because she wouldn't eat for two weeks leading up to when she laid the first egg, and then I knew she had another one in her because she wouldn't eat right after she dropped that first egg, and. I started getting really nervous because it, it like one day went by still not eating two days went by still not eating three days. So I'm like, dude, I don't want her to go egg bound and die or I don't want the egg to pop. So I took her to the vet. They did an x-ray. Sure enough, she had a full egg in her that looked great. Mm. And um, so not to get into a whole nother tangent. I'll just kind of say, <laughs> Karen, mate, this is just a conversation. So you talk about, <laughs> all right, all right, talk about I, what you want to know. You're good. Let's, I'm, let's... I'm just bad at staying on track on one thing. That's no, fine. I, I talk kinda, about what this is, this is not off. scripted. This is just talking about tree monitors. So you talk cool. about whatever you want to talk about. All right. Um, yeah. So my female black tree, I up and I, I knew she was going to cycle or I knew she was going to lay at least infertile eggs uh, for like a month before she actually did. Cause I could see mm. the swelling. I was like, she's way bigger than she normally is. Um, so she stopped eating two weeks before that, but two weeks before that, I got the mail out a little late. I got the mail out probably 10 days before she actually dropped the first egg, which is a little too close for my liking. Yeah. And I think that could have contributed to it. Um, but I, so whenever I would walk up to the shower, she was, this was when I still had them excuse me uh in the shower enclosures that i think i had i don't know if i had shown you those uh, but basically yeah, they're old enclosures pictures yeah yeah and uh every time i'd walk up to the shower she would literally run and like just immediately jump right out onto me and then climb down and just like walk on the floor and just start looking around like or she would be on the bottom of the enclosure and she would just be surfing the glass door like she wanted out mm. and that was really abnormal because like conditions were perfect in there the mail had been pulled out I was like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like, I, I couldn't figure out why she kept acting like that every day. But I was, to me, it was like, she doesn't want to be in this enclosure and lay the egg in this enclosure. Something about this enclosure is making her hate it. But like, I brought that up to my vet and I brought that up to other people. And they were like, no, like never move the female around in the middle of it. Like it'll mess everything up. And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense. Like I, but, but she was just acting like she wanted to be out of that enclosure. So I took her in for another x-ray and it had been 10 days since she dropped the first egg. That's the end of time. Long time. And they were going to do surgery that day. And so my, my normal vet, uh, Dr. Driggers, love that man to death. I will be, I'll post videos with him one day in Indonesia. Um, but, uh, he's, so I, he was out of town. Uh, I think he was in like, or he was in Hawaii or something, but um, he finally got back on that day and he was going to do the surgery. And when he saw her, it was like, this is not an animal that needs surgery. Like he, he, he called me immediately and we started talking about it. And I had been feeling like that too, because she was, she was eating at this point, but like very sparingly, but mm-hmm. she was so active, like for her being 10, 11 days since she dropped the first egg, which would now be like extremely danger zone. Like she should probably be like lethargic, yeah yeah yeah. you know what i mean sure. um, yeah i had so similar, i didn't finish the story but i had a similar thing to back up your statement but yeah oh cool um but yeah so after i talked with him i was like i'm gonna put her in the new enclosure i was like i swear that it has been the enclosure this whole time so i got home put her in the new enclosure the next day she dropped the egg on the floor just like dropped it oh. in the new enclosure and then she was totally chill what was that. the egg what was the egg like it was infertile it? it was yeah it was, was it like, like molded or normal normal slug or was it like i don't know fairly normal slug the first one that i got was definitely way better like the first infertile one she dropped was like very it looked it looked fertile other than like a big dimple on the side that was kind of what made me be like okay this this is infertile probably um but the second one was like kind of squishy and it 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 was very it was calcified but you could tell it had just been in there a little long like it was almost like it was it would be the, it would almost be the same effect as if it had just been dropped on the floor and like I didn't find it for a couple of days. Mm. That was kind of what it looked like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that that ended up working out really well, thankfully. Um, oh, I didn't but... expect you to say she was going to lay because I had an Aki. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, I've got Aki's down to a T at this point. At least I thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so one cycled for telegenesis. Yeah, perfect. Swell back down. Put the mail mm-hmm. in breed yeah hammer and food 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 aggressive 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 swell 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 
And then all of a sudden, no eggs. I'm like, what? And then she's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm like, and we're like day 33. And she's normally right around the day 25. And I'm like, mm. huh? So yeah, anyway, got it checked out. This, that, never. No eggs. But huh. she was huge. Huge. Weird. And then five months, four months, I don't know, four or five months pass. Um, and she's just laid 27 eggs. Cycled again. Couldn't wow. tell because she was huge. So I yeah. couldn't tell couldn't tell the signs of telegenesis. Um, mm-hmm. but I put the male back in with her after a few months because I've only got a four by two by two for a holding viv for the male because they live together more or less full time at a six foot. Um yeah, and when I pull the mail, I put him in a four by two by two, but I don't really like an Aki in a four by two by twos. But he stays in there for like however long I need him to stay in there for. Mm-hmm. So I put the mail back in. He wasn't interested in her at all. And then I don't know, two, three weeks into he starts trying to breed. I'm like, okay, they only try to breed when she's in vitiligenesis. So I'm like, okay, she's obviously starting to cycle again. See them locked up a few times. I can't read her, I can't tell the signs because she's so big. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I know the date, so I'm like, right, okay, we're on day like 16, so I'm going to pull the mail. Um, yeah, and then she went down underground for three days. Normally, she's down for 24 hours. Um, she went down for three days, came back up once, and yeah, she laid 27 eggs. Um, Damn, that's so I don't a lot. Know if she, yeah, so I don't know if she kept some. Uh-huh. Or cause but there was nothing con- there was nothing to show she had eggs. Like, I almost so wonder strange. if she did, like, I wonder if she, because they can, they if from my understanding... I don't know if they can reabsorb after the calcification stage. No, they can't. No. I, okay, I didn't think they could. I no. needed to run it by my vet, but I was talking to one of my friends about that a couple nights ago. Um, but I wonder if she just had like a like all the she cycled and had all the the yolks from vitellogenesis and then reabsorbed that. Yeah, possibly. And then was just and then just had all that extra weight from from all that yeah. extra nutrients. But yeah, um, she was huge, man. But now she's back to a normal size. Like she'd laid those twenty seven eggs. Oh, and then she just was like, and then she's back to being well. She, well we'll get on to this in a second and we'll touch on because it's sort of theming for this topic but i just want to touch on this while i've kept it up so gary's saying he's getting some orange heads which i'm pretty sure are discoids or similar to discoids so i just want to say this because i've learned this recently and this is how echo chambers start so oh, discoids gosh. in the uk are quite expensive and i was given literally thousands and i'm not exaggerating thousands of discoid roaches and i was like perfect these are great mm-hmm. big roach like my mangroves love it like amazing so i was like i'm going to I split out one side, split off another side. I was like, I'm not going to touch this. I'm going to breed it. I'm going to feed off this side. I said to the guy, I was like, oh, are they um, same as dubious? He's like, yeah, I think so. Males are wings, female aren't wings. Easy, perfect. Mm. So split them all out, pulled all the males out, did my ratios, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. Um, Long story short, females are winged as well. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Yeah. So, and I didn't learn this until about three days ago. And Uh I now have... 15 females that's it like damn. that's all that's all i've got um damn. so it's cool i've still got some females but just a heads up to anyone listening to this if you're trying to breed discoids or cave roaches or orange heads or anything like that the females are winged <laughs> do not feed the females like i did um and i've given a few away because i was like yeah i've got loads i've got loads and i said to the people yep yeah, Males are wings, females are no wings. So now I'm like, I need to message these people. Like, <laughs> I lied to you. But this is how echo chambers start. You, I assumed. Yeah. I didn't do any research, so I just wanted to, um, just wanted to touch on that. So we've got a couple of quick comments before we touch into obesity of monitors. Um, I almost caught a female grasshopper and was actually going to lay last week. So all of you Americans will be jealous. I throw locusts in with my mangroves and they just breed, and I end up with loads of baby locusts just hopping around in my mangrove enclosures. That's um, awesome. Yeah, but then I they're just dirt cheap, so check out the bug factory. Um, <laughs> you were fat shaming her, I was fat shaming her, and now she lost weight, so that's what you got supposed to do. Sarcasm for those people that don't understand. So we're all in the UK, all right? Well, Scandinavian, it's not uncommon for monitors to be in for not to be in dubious. I've had, especially with young Odatra and even baby Flavies, um, they've all accepted. I don't know what they are, but I'm assuming it's some sort of other roach, but I don't know what that is. Um, I've never had an issue with dubias ever. Like all of my animals take dubias, like no issues at all. To be That's honest, That's good. You're lucky. Yeah. You're lucky because it's especially hard for me because there's not many other things I can get. I now, um, 
uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have a couple other options of bugs now, I guess. Um, but it's really only. I think I, I'm not gonna say, but I already know. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah. So like large crickets and dubia roaches and superworms are like the only bugs you can get, at least here in uh, Arizona. There, there is ways to get like grasshoppers and stuff. I've now learned. Um, yeah. It just depends. I think. I don't know. I'm still scared about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> it still Fine. scares me because I don't—I I just don't like fishing game uh, coming anywhere near me or find, like I don't—I don't want them having any. I want them to love me because my my lantha notice that I have are completely legal. Yeah. Um, like I have the paperwork and everything. I've gone over it with my vet because my vet actually works very closely with them. He helps with um, certain Gila monster things that they deal with here, and he—he uh, <clears throat> he just told me like. Just be careful because, like, they will look it once they know I have a pair. It's like they might try to find any reason to try and get them from me. Yeah. If like, but if I show like I'm not just, like they're not just like a pet in my room. Obviously, like I'm trying to reproduce these guys. Yeah, they're gonna yeah, be a lot yeah. more happy with me. But I, I don't know. I just like to be careful. Basically, is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I have sure. I have good intentions with all my animals, so I don't want anyone getting no, angry. That's fine. Um, I have never have I ever seen a female Dachshund scent mark no i don't think i have um and then based on what you've just said be careful man i had you saw knock on my see, door for having uh, see, and that's what i've heard but see someone that i've talked to that sells grasshoppers was telling me it's totally legal for him to sell them to me and it's just not legal for me to sell them but i've been told different stories so i've still been hesitant to to purchase said grass efforts. So, so what I've I like heard, to feed mine dubia, basically. I'm in the UK, so I don't give a shit. So what <laughs> I've heard is <laughs> Kai Fan, I don't mind saying it on here because he advertises all over Facebook, is the only person that's legally, I don't know the ins and outs, and I'm not going to comment on the ins and outs because I'm in the UK. Um, Kai Fan is the only person that's legally allowed to sell grasshoppers because he's permitted at least this is what i've seen and what i've read so this is all i can touch on but then I've, what i understand is some places they're illegal to own even though he's allowed to sell them there and in other places if you sell them you're fucked it's basically yeah. my understanding as a brit just reading in between the lines mm -hmm. um if the species is found in your state it's yeah legal okay that's yeah. what i've heard yeah i heard i i was told exactly what you were told um but i've also heard like what father boo's talking about right now and i don't i think those grasshoppers actually are i don't even know i don't I, basically that's why this is why i put so much effort into <laughs> getting my eating dubia because i yeah. dubia are so nutritious number one yeah. um they're like such a great especially for tree monitors who are getting like who i would prefer to give only like two in two to three insects a day and that so i i give them two to three insects a day and then one day a week i give them some sort of uh special protein item like a scrambled egg which i do less i more give them whole protein i mainly just give them quail honestly i'll just give them a quail and then uh sometimes i'll switch it up and give them fish but i've strayed away from giving just like straight like meat i like to give more whole prey um because mm -hmm. i've had a lot of talks with my vet about like uric acid buildup and like how that's being caused in a lot more larger monitors not because of like unvaried diet but because like people are like oh fish and then they just give them like fish meat whereas like yeah. in a while they're going to be eating fish like the whole fish they're not going to be missing any parts and that's a whole lot more nutrition whole lot different of very a whole lot more variance in actual like vitamins and stuff they're getting yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. hot topic uh, what blows my mind right mm -hmm. anyone i'm sorry if you do this but i don't also don't care because it's me <laughs> Anyone that just buys meat from a supermarket that's like pre chopped up, pre prepared, like in a packet, like you say, a whole fish is different. But if you're buying like a fillet, mm -hmm. or if you're buying a chicken leg or a turkey leg, mm -hmm. or like, and then you're feeding it to your mom, that fucking blows my mind. Because, like, where on earth are they finding <laughs> like exactly. human prepared turkey yep. legs? Yep. So no. yeah, that see, I I used to go get like a like a tilapia fillet or I or uh, like a just like a pack of like just turkey breast or chicken breast or something. But now I don't do that anymore. Um. Yeah. So now I now I try to now I go to those Asian markets and get yeah like the, yeah man, the organs and monotel is the keeper's best friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Exactly. Get you can get yeah. like whole squid there too. Frozen yeah, squid. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give that to cool my shit. 
my Asian water monitor. Love that. But yeah, I forgot you you got black dragon, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah I left out I left out some lizards <laughs> earlier. I'm, I'm I was gonna running. say you said that, and I was like, oh shit, yeah, you got black dragon. Yeah, he's getting big. He's gonna be over. I'm moving a lot of uh, my collection over to this is so this house that I'm at right now is my mom's house. Uh, that's primarily where my whole collection is. Um, but did you want to do house, it? Did you want to do the do the first, or are we gonna save it for Instagram? It's up to you. I can, I can, yeah, I, I can show you guys. All right, guys, we're getting an exclusive tour. It's cold up here, anyways. So. We're getting an exclusive tour of Parker's Park's facility that's unseen. I've seen it because mm -hmm. you know. But any questions as well for Parker whilst he's giving us a tour, throw them in the chat. Um, tell that to the tree monitor guys that feed cat, cat food for fucking tree monitors. When I first Bruh. started, everyone told me to feed chicken gizzards, hearts, and liver. Yeah, people are cheap, man. I don't give a fuck. I'll die on that horse. People are cheap. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. what always What's always easiest for you isn't always best for the animals. That's kind of what, that's what my vet told me. No, no. I am... Um, I've just brought recently a uh, a blender and some like different stuff that I'm making my own roach chow now. So I know exactly what my roach are getting rather oh, than just feeding smart. them. Yeah. So I've been watching a lot of videos on it because my cockroach guy is, um, he's downsizing. So I'm going to bulk buy a load and really try and breed my own. But yeah, so here we are. We're in Parker's <laughs> Parks. Facility. My male black tree unplugged his uh, UVB light. So that's why that light is off. I'll have to fix nice. that. Um, but this is my tree monitor room. This is what I've been working so diligently on. These I don't know if we can make months. me small. I'm trying to figure out how to make me small. My female blue tree. I just got my female Bomei, who's out but is running away. Uh, moved over here today, so he's separate with from the female. What's up, buddy? Oh, come on. Pose for me. Yeah, you can kind of see his pattern in the back um but yeah this is it's not done yet that's why i haven't posted about it i want to do a few more things like uh add plants and all of them i haven't made it my oh the yellows are together that's a good sign uh it'll focus the female who is on the right she's still extremely nervous this is a good uh way to show the difference between the two that these two the yellow trees are my favorites and my pair specifically i really like because they're both like the extremes of the two different kinds of yellow trees you can find. My female yeah. is like that very bright, pure uh, yellow. And the male is like a lime green. Oh, don't freak out. Oh, and they're five by three. Can you still hear me? Are they five by three by three, aren't they? Yeah. The, so these are all... Geez, scared her. Um, so all these ones on this side are five by three by three. Um, and then they're raised up. Uh, I think that's about 18 inches. Hell, girl. And then these two are four by three by five. Uh, those are for my blue trees. Uh, I did those a little larger just because blue trees are naturally a foot larger. This one's covered because this is my youngest female blue tree. She's very nervous still. She is hanging out though. And then you my cordensis. It's messy about the TV park. I don't forget the TV. Oh yeah, yeah. I won't forget this the TV. This is the coolest thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, yeah. There's the TV. Um, oh, yeah. What's the TV for? Well, so this room in general, it's this won't be my permanent room. My mom is just kind enough to let me take it over. Um, so this used to be my childhood bedroom. Um, but then my when I moved out, my mom turned it into kind of like a hangout room. So there used to be a big old couch here <laughs> and yeah. like, like a bunch of other stuff. Um, but she let me take it over for now. And so right now there's like surround sound and stuff in the, in the <laughs> ceiling. So now what it serves as is it just plays nature sounds, which I'm sure That's you can so kind of hear. That um, honestly, I'm going to do that in my reptile room. Cause that is the sickest bit. Yeah. So I've always had an issue with uh, like, here, let me turn this around real quick. Um, I've always had an issue with just like silent reptile rooms, because if you've ever been to a rainforest or just outdoors in general, um oh wait hold up let me shout out shot father blue really quick my priscinus is drinking from that uh <laughs> one of those dishes he sent me uh, oh yeah, man we're we're fun. like an hour and 10 minutes already and there's so much i want to talk on so yeah. like we're gonna have to get you back on for like round three. Oh, for um, sure man let me know just, anytime just quickly you're are you 19 or 20 uh i'm 19 but i'll be 20 in five days so happy, almost 20 happy birthday in five days thanks man thank you Oh, yeah, let me let me show my cordensis. Um, excuse the poop on her glass. She just did that this morning. I haven't had a chance to clean it. Um, no, no one's judging you, man. Everyone's just jealous. 
there she's at. What's up, girl? She's shedding right now, which is really good. So we can get that get that good color from her. Um, but yeah, she's she's in this bathroom because she's quarantined for now. Um, I like to I like to always quarantine my new lizards because at this point I can't risk anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so who's so your favorite? My favorite. Uh, I gotta go with my male yellow. My main man. Oh right yeah, it's your favorite. If I can get close without making the female freak out again. Will has just suggested that you should Airbnb. Well, at least for him, like hire it out <laughs> and people can come and stay. <laughs> hey, if anybody wants tours anytime, let me know. Ten pound a ticket. Send it to Paul's monitors. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> gotta give you your cut. Yeah. Um. Uh, what was I? I totally forgot. Something about a yellow tree being your favorite oh yes yes yeah the yellow trees are my favorite but the bomi eye i don't know they're kind of growing on me man i love the bomi eyes pattern and just color in general like there i've the few pictures of them that there are i've always seen very dull ones and yeah. my pair i don't know if it's just my pair but i've, I've seen even more um that like cold-blooded has they have a lot more color than from what i've seen from pictures but they are just like breathtakingly like shimmering gold they are really pretty so they're i don't know they're my female bomi eye is so chill too like she'll actually jump out on my chest um they're smaller than i thought what, what would you say that like prosinus um yellow's tree resin dry yeah size? pretty much yeah they're they're about he's about the same size as i'd say my black tree female is over here um my bakari probably about the same size as them this little dude is so watch this He'll, nah you know what i'm not gonna do that he's gonna, I'm gonna chase him around <laughs> he will literally come flying out but this dude loves to get up here and like he unplugs his uh, i don't even i don't even i don't know how to fix it he's some i don't even know how he does it he just unplugs his uvb like once a day so that's always fun to deal with but um but yeah that's that's what so, we've got so far. So humble with it as well. You're like, yeah, it's fine. It's just my, just <laughs> every like single a... species of tree. When I said, don't worry about it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm. I am blessed to have what I have for sure. I I love these guys. I love all of them. I, I say the I say the yellows and the bomi are my favorite, but I love them. I, they're all. There's not one that I don't like. Lose my mind over. Especially black trees. Stop sleeping on the black trees, guys. Oh, mate. I literally, <laughs> my friend who's not in chat, who was here last week, Matt, the breeder, he's got some blacks. Um, and his male is so tame. Like, so tame. And I'm just the, like, oh, yeah. my God, I need it. That's one of the things that makes the Bakari so special to me is majority of the people that I've talked to that have worked with them and with other species of tree monitors, all of them agree the black trees are way more social than all the other ones and way more confident. Like some that can just be food motivation, but like overall, they're usually the most docile tree monitors that you're going to deal with. In my experience, the yellows or the blues, man, eh, really the blues, man, the blues can be the most spastic. Like they are crazy. My my blues yeah. are sometimes, but but at the same time, they're they're very food motivated and very. This girl has become very good. So this girl was actually captive bred by uh, Sundown Reptiles uh, or uh, Brian Susan. Okay. Um, I didn't get it directly through him, um, but yeah, she's she's a sweetheart. She Stun would probably crawl out on me if I opened it up. But. The stunning animals, man. Thank you. Thanks, man. Much appreciated. So I, I have two more to move in here. I have my male blue to go in this big enclosure right here. I'm just going to keep then... it on you for the minute. Keep going back. So you can do. Cool. Um, but yeah, Father Blue's asked a good question saying, did you feel any backlash from the older guys having such a big collection so fast? Uh, a lot of people have like warned me of that, but I so far have not really received any hate. I don't know if I don't know if I'm just not known enough. I don't know. I no one's no one's messed reached out to me to talk talk crap. But if you want to, feel free. I'd love I'd love to. <laughs> oh, it, in that case, then I fucking hate you for all your lizards. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Because no. the thing is, is I, I feel like a lot of people uh, might see like what I have and then hear, oh, he's 19, and be yeah. like, oh, he's just he's just buying these to buy them because he's he's young but like no nah, this is like like i'm making this my life like if like this is all i do right now so a lot of I'll, I'll let you guys in on a little secret um like i've uh i've pretty much i hold on how do i explain this sorry <laughs> i fine. was in i was in college and um recently my parents allowed me to make the 
decision to try and take a year off and really try and make this work as a business. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like, as you hear me say, like, I'm not like, this isn't for the money, but like, I obviously need to make money <laughs> because I want to make this like my career. Like I want, like, I'm not just trying to be like a breeder. Like I want to have Parker's Park, the zoo. Like that's my long-term goal as I want to yeah. have Arizona itself um, has one of the largest reptile markets in the U S and there's no really like like reptile zoos here like herp zoos like there's a couple like there's a there, there's like some there's some i won't say like lower end but just not like what i want to try to build here like i want to i want like a a zoo to showcase all sorts of reptiles for anybody to come through like this is my passion i'm not just buying these lizards because i'm like oh that's a pretty lizard let me throw it in here like these enclosures should show that too because like i built all these from hand well not the not the pieces the pieces were cut out um, yeah, by my yeah, good yeah, friend yeah. camo cages everybody go <laughs> on instagram look up camo cages check him out follow him check him out um he builds the best enclosures ever uh all of these are built by him um and yeah yeah so far no backlash pretty much <laughs> sorry i kind of went on kind of got i'm kind of getting lost fine. trying to check on things i need to get no, out of you're here. fine mate don't don't stress <laughs> don't stress don't stress um we're we're approaching an hour and fifteen, so we'll 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 go for a little bit longer, but we'll start wrapping it up because I know you're a yeah, busy up to man. you. I'm, I can honestly stick around for a bit longer. I'm having a good time. Do up you mind you. if we touch once you've sat back down comfortably because it's a bit of a hot topic? Yeah. On your prestimus. Yes. Um. Like what? Like how I received her and stuff. How you received her and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I know you shared it on your Insta, so I didn't find. I didn't think you would mind me asking. Yeah. Actually, um, and af- actually, after I explain it, um, actually, you know what? No. While I explain it, I'll go take her out because she. Okay. So okay. I got her, um, on Morph Market, but she was produced by my friend Cody Cop, uh, who I've mentioned a few times in this podcast, and. Uh, <clears throat> forgive me if i'm saying his last name wrong too i don't know actually I no i've only ever read it <laughs> yeah i have no idea. Um, i think it, i don't know i don't know him i've spoken to him a few times but i yeah yeah um but so when he saw her posted i sent it to him and i was like yo do you think because the, the reason i've held on getting a prosinus like the prosinus was the last species that i got the reason i did so is because i wanted i didn't want just like a normal green you prosinus. want my male maruki is what you want <sighs> Don't even start on the Maruki. Don't even start on the Maruki. Oh, That's man. what you were, because I remember you messaged my mate and you were like, you were like, can I, or is there any way to get babies or whatever? And I was like, you do know that's my animal. I didn't know that. So I, I, yeah, I didn't fine. know until yeah. he told me that. I was like, oh, whoa. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. hey, that still stands. I know it's difficult, but I, I do have friends we'll now who exported from we'll import- swap you yeah. some Bohemi for some pure, sexy <laughs> Maruki. <laughs> hey, I'm down with that. I'm honestly down with that because I don't know anywhere else I can find Maruki. And yeah, we got some them... pills, man. Here's a here's a F1 with Cites from uh yeah, Wild Caught female. My male's Wild Caught, so it's as good as as good as you're gonna get. Ah, oh, dude, that's mm, 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 mm. that's mm. the Maruki. I think, man. I think we have the only. So currently between us, we have a trio. I think that's the only pair in the UK. So, dude, yeah, I, yeah, I don't even. I know of like a couple people with them in the u.s but that's i'm not considering my collection done until i have the maruki i want all the mine is um one of the nicest i think that's on the internet if i say so myself oh, dude yes it's like mint the perfect mint green ah, yeah man. so right, jealous me, of that tree monitor let me just put it back straight onto you Come here. yeah so this girl i got so this was she was produced by cody but she was raised by someone else and cody sold her as like a two or three month old to the guy um uh and then he had her for i think seven months eight months so he sent and cody even told me he was like huh weird the pictures he's using her from like three or four months ago but me being stupid i didn't really like think any i i I don't know this is like the only purchase i've ever made where i didn't ask a thousand questions and i think it was kind of just because it was like oh it was produced in my head i was saying it was produced by cody but like she wasn't raised by cody you gotta come out girl it's like the most chill she's ever been um let me just grab her come here Okay. How old is she? Because she doesn't look massive. She's about, I think she hatched in April, so she's like a little over a year old, like a couple weeks older than a year. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But come here, why are you being like this? Yeah. See, like as you can see, like she's <laughs> she doesn't about as if she camera. doesn't want to come out now. 
Um, but yeah, she's like about as chill as you can have a tree monitor. Yeah. And so when she showed up, if you can, the camera on this sucks, but if you can see that tail. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah. Up. So yeah. thankfully, this is the only problem she now has. Oh, stop crawling. Um, her mouth used to be all, it had a bunch of rot on it. She had like every single toe had an issue. Um, turn this around. She basically every, she had about every issue you can think of due to improper humidity. Here she's yeah. Out on my shoulder. And it's just such a shame because like, look at this animal. Look at how, number one, how docile she is. There's yeah. no excuse. Like, it's, I, I don't know. It's just depressing. You, there, there's no reason that an animal like this should be neglected, especially a captive bred one. Like, if we're captive breeding animals, they should be, um, they should be perfect their whole lives. Like that's our duty. Like that's why we have them captive, captive to begin with, is to give them a better life, not to end up make with ones worse. like this that get, yeah, make it worse. And yeah, I. It, thankfully, she's now turned. It literally, and it, it's it's sad too because it took. How many months? Eight months for her to probably get like that. I mm. completely turned her around in a week, week and a half. Like she's completely. Yeah. It's been like two weeks now, but she, she just pooped on my back. I can't make this up. <laughs> can't make this up. She literally just shit down my back. Oh no, wait, no. I think some of it missed. It's on the floor. Don't work with animals or children, they say. Oh, don't jump. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay, now she's being too rambunctious. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, she's she's one of the best. Thankfully, she's making a full recovery. Let's see if I can. This camera sucks so much, but I'll try and show the details. Um, but yeah, so the the little pink. Oh, so sorry. See, as you can see, it's very sensitive. Just even, yeah. I just like tapped it right there, and she took off running. Sorry, yeah. girl. Um, so like that's the only thing that can really get her going is that tail. Um, she had about two toes that were like really causing her some pain same thing if i like even tap them she just take off running and yeah. uh the, but anyways the pink mark on the on the tail it's not like exposed flesh it's fingernail polish so i make sure that it's not growing um because <clears throat> if we can help it it'd be best me and my vet were talking if, it, if we can help it and um the tail can just crisp up and fall off on its own that'd be best case scenario if it comes down to it, he has a laser, so we can just laser it off. But that's why I'm marking the necrosis to make sure it's not further spreading. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, her tail yeah. is fully necrotic. And her toes were cut off about halfway down. Two of them had to be, uh, like, I say amputated, but literally all it took was my vet, like, just did, like, one little yeah. twist, and it just popped right off. Yeah. And then it was, like, barely any blood. Um, so there was those two toes. There was about two or three other toes that like were really constricted and starting to balloon, but I was able to get the shed off and now they're like fine. Yeah. Uh, her mouth recovered within a week, which her, he kept saying, Oh, she gets dirt stuck in her mouth. Oh, she gets dirt stuck in her mouth. I pull her out of the box. It's a giant scab of blood mixed with dirt. Like it's, it's like obviously like an open dry wound on her mouth. And yeah, 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 yeah. this is this whole ordeal, but don't it, it's it's a shame because you could tell the guy like genuinely did like like he cared about the the prosinus it was more just the the ignorance to like yeah. a lot of the facts like he was like oh well i sprayed the enclosure every day personally what i think really could have happened when you look at how chill that animal is like how docile it is it can like i can go in there and handle her at any point of the day yeah every time I think what could have happened is he was handling her too much and she was spending more time outside of her enclosure than inside her enclosure. So then she's not really ever in that actual humidity is she? She's only in whatever yeah, humidity, yeah. wherever he's located, which I think was like the Midwest. And a tree monitor is simply not going to survive or even come close to thriving in humidity like that. So no, of course. Yeah, no. That's my well, theory, but I never got to ask the guy because he just blocked me the second I was like, dude, this animal is like in terrible condition. Yeah. But whatever. I gotta say, it's, I was about to mention Matt. So just quickly, Matt, if you're listening, don't worry. I've secured us a trade. We're getting captive bred Bohemi, Bohemi, Bohemi I, um, for some Baruki. So long story short, the pair's gonna come to mine and I'll be in charge in, in the next <laughs> next nine or so months I, there's no time frame on it but matt's got yeah, too many tree monitors <laughs> um so i'll be taking on the pair um so i'll be taking on the pair so i'll make sure that i capture breed them so we can sort out <laughs> traits <laughs> um yes but I, was, 
I was going to bring it up though because Matt recently picked up a McRae eye, um, and it's on mm. his Instagram, so he won't mind me sharing an adult male McRae eye. Um, you don't have to tell me the price, but did you pay full price for that animal, or was it discounted, or was it what? For my so the for only Pacinus. ones that I've paid. Uh, oh, for the Persinus. Yeah, for um, the no, You don't so have I to paid... say like full price, but is it was it was it, was it honestly... advertised as bad condition, or was it like not? It wasn't advertised as bad condition, but so when he so here's what happened. So he posted it originally for twenty five hundred. I right. saw it that morning. I, I I don't I don't miss the tree monitor post <laughs> that pops up on Morph Mark. I'll He's be on there at four a.m. <laughs> no, it, it was actually funny little backstory. Um, kind of off topic, but um, That's that cordensis thing. that I got, there was like a literal battle between like me and like four other people that wanted that cordensis, and it just so happened that I was. Uh, it's just I'm up like all night sometimes like because i just i'll be building enclosures or i'll be feeding my lanthos because the lanthos are nocturnal so i like to feed them at night um or just watching tv because nighttime's the only free time i have because from dawn to dusk i'm working on the reptiles man man. (laughs) that's all i do um but um yeah so it was it's funny because i i like people were giving me crap because they're like how do you how did you, how did you get it? Cause I, I, I messaged the guy that posted the cordensis like 20 minutes before someone else messaged him. So I like just barely got the, just barely beat it, but it was at like three 30 in the morning. Like we were battling for this animal at three 30 in the morning in uh, Jesus at least Christ. Pacific standard time. But um, yeah, so the, the Prasinus was, ori- was originally posted for 2,500 and I saw it in the morning. And then when I checked on it again at night, it had already been dropped to 2000. So I was like, okay, this is somebody that wants to move it quick. So I mm. just inquired. I was like, would you take eighteen hundred for? It? Mm. And he was, he said, yeah. So I was like, okay. I mean, that's Wait. that's a solid yeah. deal for a for a Prasinus that's that that blue. Yeah. Uh, and it's captive bred. So I was. I, that's why I didn't really ask a whole lot more questions than I should have. But I'm almost glad that I didn't because I probably wouldn't have ended up buying the animal. Yeah. And I'm almost glad that I did because like like I said, like it took like a week to turn it around. Like that's all it takes. Like you just mm. need to put it in the right in the right habitat like that's all that's all that that's all that was wrong with her like there was no there's nothing yeah. else it, the damage it, was already yeah. done sort of thing yeah. the damage was done and uh she's the best pet i could ask for other than she's like a very picky eater now <laughs> but um i was gonna I'm, ask are you gonna totally... you're gonna breed her or is it just a pet mm, i think i might breed her but i i don't know i i there's still a lot of confusion and questioning on what actually causes that blue coloration in the pristine because it's not naturally occurring well mine's uh, well caught and it's been like that since this came in so well yours is that the maruki are known to be like that mint okay green, but that's okay. different so that's so there's three main localities of pristine there's the sarong there's the jayapura and there's yeah. the, Mar- the maruki the maruki yeah. by far my favorite i think that they should like like those look like a different species. Like they have the patterns of Biox. No, they ha- they more have the patterns of Rasingiri. I would, yeah. in my opinion, they have the patterns yeah. of Rasingiri, but they're like a mint green. Like they're not quite that turquoise blue that like my Prasinus is, but they're not green at all. They're like that perfect like light in between. That oh 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 man. Right, I'm Prasinus... gonna I'm gonna send a picture of my one to you now just so I can load it up and show everyone. Please. Carry, carry on talking, but yeah. Um, but. Yeah, Prasinus in general, I would probably put it seventh in terms of like my favorite tree monitor, or not seventh, uh, sixth in terms of like my list of favorite tree monitor species. However, mm-hmm. if we're talking about Maruki Prasinus, that bumps them to number two like, right away, like for what's, sure. What's number one? Uh, Rasingiri uh, or yellows. I, yellows. The yellows just can't be beat for me. I love the yellows. My my male yellow in, in specific is like my favorite lizard I have. He's just like, he's so unique. I don't see many that are out there that are like that lime green kind of kind of color. And he's also like, well, he was like my most social. I used to be able to go in there and like pet him and pick him up without restraining him and just like scoop him up. He wouldn't mind at all. Yeah. But uh, since the move, it's it's I'm working back to it. I'm close. I'm, I'm slowly getting back there. But um, yeah, a lot of them, as you guys, I don't know if you guys saw my my female yellow freak the hell out, but uh, <laughs> they're still kind of nervous. But at least I see them getting along. So. That's yeah, cool. over here, yellows, they're 50-50. Some yellows are like, um, like you say, they're like yours, which mm-hmm. is stunning yellow. Like, what? Or they're very dull. Others are, um, they might as well be Prasinus. Yep. Um, but yeah, just quickly, so I'm sort of being rude and trying to find pictures of my blue one. I'm trying to find a picture because I, I brought them as a pair. Well, I didn't buy them as a pair, but I had my male um, 
I'm a bad person because I was going to cross localities because I didn't find, I think I could find another Maruki. But anyway, um, so I have my male sarong, which is a stunning sarong, like mm-hmm. a vibrant green as they come. Um, and then I have my Maruki, um, which I brought as a female. Mm-hmm. Um, and a few other tree monarch people were like, yeah, female, female, female. And this is really interesting. So after, because it was kept as a trio, um, mm-hmm. and they just didn't they they just didn't want the Maruki anymore. They were like, the pair's proven, but I don't want the Maruki because it just doesn't fit. It's like really shy and it hides away and this, that, and the other. I was like, all right, cool. So I brought it. Um, okay, here we are. Um kept it for a little bit, in, introduced it to my my sarong, this, that, and the other. They got on, that's fine. They started to lock. I saw signs of like vitilogenesis or swelling, saw this, or that, blah, blah, blah. So everything, everything was going well. Until one day I came home and saw the Maruki female locked with the male. And sometimes that can happen. Females will lock with males as like a dominance thing. But I saw a, a hemipene, like a flower, clear as day. And I was like, who the fuck is that? And I zoomed in and watched it retract into the cloaca of the Maruki. I was like, oh, my God, I've got two males. So I split them out instantly, even though they were getting on, other than the stress of like trying to breed each other. But they were getting on. But I split them out straight away. Um, and then when I split them out, Within six months of being split out, the Maruki's hemipenal bowl just went, Boom. and I, I looked into it and spoke to people. And it turns out that um, similar to lions, male lions that don't want to like be like I'm a male, they don't grow the mane. So then, are you looking at the Prasinas? <laughs> dude? Oh shit! Yours is like the bluest one I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh my, my god! Right. So hang on, bear with me, everyone, because technical difficulties. So what I'm gonna do is bring oh. up this is Parker's Instagram. I'm gonna full screen. <laughs> hopefully i can still hear you right now i'm gonna go onto instagram and leak mine and parker's dms but that's okay because <laughs> we've only been bitching about everybody so it's fine exactly and link, link my own dms oh no it won't let me un- won't let me click on it no it won't oh, let me click on- oh that's so sad Lame. um how else can i do this <laughs> right yeah, hang on I'll, everyone i'm gonna we'll save these least. pictures and i'm gonna post an instagram post so don't worry I'm going to post an Instagram post and we'll all be able to see these pictures and then I'll delete the Instagram post after this so everyone can <laughs> see it. Um, we're doing this for the cause, everybody. Um, but yeah, he's nice, isn't he? Dude, that thing is unreal. I'm still look- That's <laughs> See, that's what I want. That's I need myself one of those. <laughs> um, I really need one of those. No that's worries, really Take cool. it easy, man. No, he's, he's stunning. So obviously he's in the yeah. care of Matt right now. Mm-hmm. Um trying to breed it i don't think we've had a um cycle yet um so i'm just going to post an instagram post people that are following me like oh cool photo dump but um it's actually just oh my god this is going all technical difficulties so i should have been more prepared um but yeah he's one of the nicest prasinas i've ever seen oh and hands down and that's not me being like um oh mine are the best but like he is a stunner so I'm just posting a post now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Instagram once it loads. Um, I'm going to get it up now before I leak all my DMs. So bear with me, everyone. Um, but yeah, just quickly on Matt's McRae eye. So he got this McRae eye um, and it had, I hope he doesn't mind me speaking about it because he did mention it in chat, but he had it. It had um, scale rot. I've got a like on two likes on my post already. Like I'm famous. So um, <laughs> right, add to stream. Bear with me, everyone um let's get rid of the comments um all right full screen uh, is it full screen it is full screen right let me flick through this zoom in through right so this one here is kermit my lime green male and this is beautiful allura look at that look Um, at that guys you're (laughs) telling me that like these are naturally occurring lizards right here these are yeah. natural. You're telling me there's better monitors or lizards out there than tree monitors? Like that back pattern, baby. Come on. But it's got old bacterial scars. So that's what those black marks are, that old bacterial scars oh, um, for when he came in. Um, he's missing one claw, um, but otherwise he's flawless. He is pretty, man. And there's the old hemipenal bulge, everyone. Oh, yes. So he's packing Big old male. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Only thing with Maruki that I found is they do get the odd bit of like bad shed in the thighs. Hmm. Um, and he will sleep in a water bowl as well. Um, and I was speaking to someone called Cody Joe, who breeds mangroves and um, quinces and stuff. And he finds that Maruki Doriana spend a lot more time in water 
And I found that Maruki Prasinus will actually sleep in water bowls. Interesting. Um, yeah. So I don't know if there's something going over, going on over there in Maruki. Um, but yeah, so there you go, everyone. Oh, I don't know what I've done. Um, let's remove that. So I don't know what's happening now. Um, Plug my computer in. But yeah, so... That was just so no, he's so nice. When Matt had this McCray eye that had it had scale rot. It had um I think I saw him shed. post about that actually. Yeah, it was in mm-hmm. bad shape. Like mm-hmm. but he had to do daily soaks. It was either daily or twice daily. Um I can't remember what he soaked it in. If you're still in chat, Matt, if, let me know. If not, it's not the end of the world. But he he had to do daily soaks of it, um, had to get it out. And it's almost like this McCray I knew it was being helped because he's a big, like, four-foot, like, beastie. As big as McCray I get, it's huge. Mm-hmm. And Matt was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have such a headache. I'm trying to catch this animal out. So much stress. And the, the McCray I was like, um, it almost, like, knew Matt was helping. It was just like, okay. And, like, almost allowed him just – and it, you could see the animal was a bit like, oh, I hate my life, but I know you're helping me, which is so mad. Um, yeah. But, again, <clears> it's just – I don't doubt the guy loved it. But it's just a lack of knowledge and a lack of care. Um, mm-hmm. And it's having the humility to be like, okay, that's clearly wrong. I can see something's wrong. Yeah. Help, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no. And that's the thing, too. Like, I, I was, like, I was super nice to the guy, too. I just, like, messaged him. I was like, look, man, like, there's a lot of issues with this. I was like, I'm not even going to ask for a refund. Just, like, help me out with the vet bills, and we're good. Just block me. So now, yeah. So now I'll talk shit. Now I'll talk shit. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Yeah. Well but, if you uh, want to talk shit, you don't have to name him, but I've I've deliberately ignored it. But <laughs> he was he was just like a random uh, just like some guy that um like he that was like one of like two lizards he had. Like he wasn't okay. like a breeder or anything. So yeah. yeah. So. And a no one, Joe Smo. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, do a so you've got a pair of Bohemi, hopefully eggs soon. Hopefully. Fingers crossed, touch wood. Best you birthday got... gift ever. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that eggs on your that, birthday. That'd be I had it. Be. eggs on Christmas Day. So, oh, you, really? Yeah, infertile mangrove eggs, but still, oh, still, well, she, she laid she laid Christmas Day. I, I dug the eggs up Boxing Day, so it still counts. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, you got yellows hopefully going soon, blacks, cordensis mm, soon. Cordensis, my female's still young. Um, I there's two I, I kind of have been thinking that i now want a 2.2 of bomei and a 2.2 of cordensis so i might end up getting an older female i might end up get i might end up getting sorry an yeah. older female um in a m- couple months we'll see uh kind of depends on my contact um but yeah yeah for for the cordensis it'll probably be a bit because my female, I would guesstimate my female needs at least another year. The male I'm getting, he's adult. He's an adult. He's ready to go. Um, but the black trees, my female is just now starting to get that really good weight back to her. She was, she got really, really, really skinny after laying eggs. Because I mean, she wouldn't, she would only eat like one pinky mouse or a roach uh, like every other day. Like that was the extent of her eating throughout that three week period. And the first two weeks, she didn't eat at all um so she went a long time like not eating she lost a lot of weight from those those two eggs so i'm, I'm kind of giving her a big break i want her to be fully recouped and good um but yeah the the yellow trees it sucks it is what it is though i i, I was trying to get my female moved over without having to grab her um like i had this specific log in there that i kind of cut out of this out of the foam that's why that's another reason I don't like those those showers is I foamed all the wood in there so I couldn't remove it easily. Yeah. So like I could the extent of my cleaning was like just like hosing the wood down and letting it uh get to the bottom and then just scooping out the substrate. These new enclosures, all of the all of the wood is just like wedged in there so I can remove it anytime I want. Yeah. And also that's another reason I really like the tunnels. I can put let's say I want to kill clean the females enclosure. They when I have since I've had those tunnels open for both the yellows and the bomi eye both the male and the female will just go back and forth to the, through the two enclosures throughout the day. So I just wait until they're in one enclosure, wall it off. I can take everything out of that enclosure, do a full deep clean, like once a month, keep yeah. everything good and clean and smelling good in there. And uh, I also put drains at the bottom. So like uh, I can just put a home Depot bucket or a tub or something underneath and just bring the hose in from outside. 
<laughs> get it all done. I got that. I actually got that idea from uh, some builds I saw from uh, uh, Hail the Scales on Instagram. He's he's. Okay. Uh, I've talked to him a couple times. I don't think I've seen him uh, to be fair. But him and him and Mike's monitors. It, uh, the, I think the idea originally came from Mike's monitors. He's also someone in the U.S. Uh, big monitor. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of Mike. Yeah. <clears throat> um. But yeah, they 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 did that for. I think I think Hail the Steels did it for his peach throats, and then I I don't know what Mike did it for. Um. But I really like that idea, and I was like, I, I I thought of it more for. I think they did it more for like the like peach throats are gonna want more water, so I think they had like big water tubs in the bottom and would drain them easy that way. But when I saw it, I instantly thought, wait, I could just bring the hose in and hose everything down and let yeah, the water all rush yeah. out if I did that. Um, but yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's it's that. pretty much everything going on. Hopefully I get some get some Bomei eggs in the next couple of weeks. That'd be sick. That'd be unreal, man. That yeah, would be man. unreal. That would be I'll um... keep, I'll keep posting keep, updates, of course. And keep um keep a couple of babies when I produce the Marukis. <laughs> I, oh, I will. Oh, I will. That's oh, fine. I will. So yeah. just quickly, I'm sorry to hear this, Gary. Um, he helped someone with a patigo in bad shape yesterday, but sadly it was too late. The animal passed. Um, it killed him. Thing is, mate, you can't – it's a hard one because I've had it a couple of times where I've helped animals. But the biggest thing that I hate about being famous, um, <laughs> people message me a lot, you know, and I get a lot of messages, and it's normally about mangroves, and it's normally about ones that are – I say it's normally, it's not normally. Sometimes it's about ones that are on death's door. Mm. And it makes me go, do you know what? I don't want to keep animals. But then what I need to remember is what you need to look at is if you keep pushing out there how to care for them, hopefully in 10, 15, 20 years time, that won't ever happen again because people will learn from me, from others. And hopefully in, like I say, in 15, 20 years time, animals won't be in a situation where they are left for too long to the fact that they're on death's door. So I'm sorry they had to go through that, Gary, but hopefully the industry is changing and hopefully it doesn't take away from it. it doesn't I, I go through regular spouts of just going, Do you know what, I'm going to sell everything and I just don't want to be a part of this hobby anymore. But it's always good to remember the good um, in times of the dark. So mm-hmm. I agree. Um, I just saw Father Blue's comment. Yeah. Do you plan on getting anything after the cords, or are you happy with a pair of each? Oh no! Oh no! I <laughs> man's got oh, aspirations. No. Yes, sir. He's no, Thanos. I, uh... He's planning on taking over <laughs> planets, baby. Yes, sir. No, I want I want as many tree monitors as I can fit in any space I have. So for right now, I'm limited um, to my space, but I, I think I. I don't know. Uh, I, I got my eye. Uh, there's, there's still that, as, as I'm sure most people know on here. I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm, it's like my secret. So I'll just say it. There's still that there's a young, very young, not very young, but like sub adult, young sub adult age, uh, male bomey eye on a uh, cold blooded shop. Yeah. I've seen, even I've seen that. Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, I've been, it's been up for a while. <laughs> been thinking about it, but uh, no, yeah. Cash, it, it, cash deal yeah exactly so <laughs> yeah no <laughs> it's yeah there, there's a there's a something cold-blooded is like really good to work with too because they they they're um they really take care of their animals like like they they show up in good they're not going to sell anything that's in bad quality they're they're very good i like working with them I, I i would definitely recommend them um but as long as i can fit the tree monitors that i have like in those size enclosures that i have like the, i want them as big as i can keep them like that um i'll get as many as i can fit honestly <laughs> so I, I, my question right just mm-hmm. quickly i've got two one's not a question there's a mm-hmm. guy that works in cold-blooded i'm pretty sure it works in cold-blooded um and he sent me a picture the other day and it's mm-hmm. not what you all expect it was a customer wearing a paul's monitors t-shirt yo no way that's really cool <laughs> damn that's down in florida that's all hey, right I was like, what the Damn. fuck? Like, That's a guy really cool, in Florida man. walked into a reptile shop that a guy that I happened to speak to worked at, and he was like, whoa, I've got to take a picture. I know that guy. Dude, so that that's awesome. crazy. I'm in Nashville now, just so we all know. Yeah. Um, but my question is, right, and now this is my personal opinion, so you don't have to agree because this is an opinion. So my brain right now with my reptile keeping, this is where I'm at. I want a million animals, 
like we all do. <laughs> so I'm like, could I cram a mangrove in there? Or could I cram a tree monitor in there? Or could I cram, you, you know, like we all do, mm-hmm. within reason. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's better to have less in more? For example, let's just say, for example, my, this is actually what's going to happen. So I'm building in the next three or four months, uh, eight foot long, seven foot tall, two and a half foot deep enclosure for Brasenius. Yeah. Oh, right. wow. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. But for the time being, there'll be a divider in the middle and there'll be a pair and pair. So they'll have four foot by two and a half foot by seven foot. So it'd be the pair of uh, Marukis and then the my pair um, until whatever happens. Um, and then I might make two enclosures that size or alternatively, it would just be one big enclosure with a pass through for male and female so I can separate, separate them off. But for now, it's going to be two pairs. So even the four foot by two and a half foot by... Um, so four foot long, two and a half foot deep, seven foot tall, it's still bigger than most give. Mm-hmm. but then i'm like it, it's not in sense of the size but i'm like if i only had one pair of prasinas they could be in an eight foot long seven foot tall two and a half foot deep so like the half enclosures will be okay mm-hmm. but then i'm like why don't i just have one pair excuse me why don't i just have one pair in that because i can't i can't house both in that size enclosure in the sense of i haven't got space for two enclosures that big um so my my question is, so like where I'm, where my brain is right now, I'm like, I don't want to sacrifice space for the animals I already have to prioritize animals that I don't have, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So obviously, if you've got in your head, you're happy with an X size enclosure, then you know what size enclosures you want. But for me personally, and this isn't me, this is just me asking your opinion, because I'm trying to figure out my own life. It's like, how do you know that an enclosure is big enough? Like, how do you, because like, for example, be open and transparent. So when I started keeping mangroves, my first mangrove was just mango. And I was told by some of the bigger boys that keep them six by three by three for an animal up to four foot long. Mango's two and a half foot. I was like, oh, six by three by three would be massive for her because she's only two and a half foot. And they keep up to four foot in a six by three by three. So I got her in a six by three by three and I was like, fuck, it's too small. But I had no space for any other enclosure. So I was like, it's too fucking small. We moved and I had an eight by three by three not built. So I was like, it will do. So I built her an eight by three by three. Um, so I increased her area by two by three. So six, six by three is 18, 18 square foot. Um, and I was like, it's still too small. <laughs> so I'm upgrading her again. Um, mm-hmm. And then this is another hot topic as well, because I touched on it in the last podcast. So she was laying eggs regularly in the six by three by three. So clearly she's happy, right? Mm -hmm. clearly i can meet her environmental stimulus for to the point of her laying so if i put her in the eight by three by three and she didn't lay i'd automatically assume she was happier in the six by three by three but surely it just means i can't meet her requirements in an eight by three by three Mm -hmm. but she's laying in the eight by three by three so it's not my care or anything like that Mm -hmm. but i'm sort of gone on a tangent myself but how do you know that enough's enough you know what i mean yeah that's a good question um that is a good question. I, cause I talk about this. Here's one thing that I always remember. Um, well, no, here, let me, let me say this first. Uh, so I, I kind of eyeball, I, I eyeball a lot of what I do. A lot of what I do is taught to me from my animals. I'd say it's kind of hard to explain, I guess, to like, no, like, I know exactly like you what you mean. Get it. I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Like you can just like, it's not like I'm like, just like making it up either. Like as I go, like, oh, my animal likes this. Like you can genuinely tell, like reading Mm -hmm. their behaviors, seeing what they normally do on a day-to-day basis. You can tell when they're unhappy. You can tell when they're upset. Like even just looking at like the way they look at you, like I can immediately tell, oh, like that dream on is on edge today. Better move slow. Um, So I think it depends on how you watch your animal. Like if your animal is using the full size of the enclosure that's mm-hmm. great but i also think like i don't know there's certain i think it's all i think it's important to offer as much space as you can for the animal like you don't want them crammed i always how i think about it like why i did all the enclosure sizes i did is i was like okay i want them to be able to fully stretch their body out in every direction 
yeah um, in the enclosure well, I that's agree. why i, I like agree with that. Yeah. yeah and like so i all of those are three feet deep and that's a problem for a lot of people and it's a problem for me because they don't fit their doors anymore like all those mm -hmm. enclosures i had to bring in there in pieces and build up myself that's why i was saying like i assembled them myself like camo cages cuts out the pieces but then i have to screw them together once i get home here obviously yeah. he can he can screw them together for you that's just because i'm i'm weird and i like my enclosures really big <laughs> um but uh yeah like i did the three foot for them because all of them are about three feet or at three feet long mm -hmm. um and a lot of that's tail so that that really gives them a lot of room to move around in yeah however that's not like those aren't their final enclosures like for sure, like those, I would rather have as raise up enclosures once I down the, like for now they're great. Like they're definitely plenty big, but like how I was saying earlier, I want a zoo. Like when mm -hmm. I say I want a zoo, like I don't want a zoo where I just cram one of everything in one area in one enclosures. And it's like strictly for the public to come be like, oh, look at this and basically abuse animals. Like basically just take, take snakes out, just like, I, I don't know. Like, well, the snakes that want to be handled are fine. Uh, basically, like you, you get what I'm saying. I know you've seen, saying, yeah. you've seen those animals for money. Yeah, yeah, you've seen those reptile zoos that do that stuff. I'm not going to say anything specifically. Um, but like the reptile zoo that I dream of is like one where it's like you walk in and there's a pair of tree monitors in like a ten by ten by seven enclosure, like absolutely massive. You can have yeah. multiple females in there. And a big thing that I really like too is uh, it, a, 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 another thing like how. Um, I play the music in my reptile room. Mm -hmm. I think of the experience of the animals because the animals have five senses just like us, but they have more heightened senses also. So like sound, that's why like, that's a big thing for me to play those rainforest sounds in there. And I really enjoy that because it makes them. I'm going to start I doing started, that. I really like that. So here's something you might, that I actually legitimately think is like a huge help with that. Um, before I started doing that, every time I'd come in there, if I like drop something, everybody hits the fucking shit hits the yeah, fan. Everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody runs, hits the walls, like freaks out. If I open a door and it creaks too loud, they're like, "What the hell?" Like they get scared right away. Now that I have those that white noise essentially playing, yeah, they don't really care. They stay out all day long. They're all like, like they're used to the sounds at this point. It it kind of it yeah. kind of dulls them out. I first started doing the music uh for my albino iguanas because my albino iguanas specifically like if my phone rang and i was like holding one of them they'd freak out so like they just were not used to loud sounds and that makes sense because the albino iguanas have reduced vision yeah so they're definitely going to rely on their other senses much more um so i think it's important when we're talking enclosure size it's just important to consider the animal's full experience and like as long as it has enough space to really be uh like moving around and living its full life and it doesn't it's not doesn't you can tell it doesn't feel crammed like if it's coming up to the door and like trying to get out constantly all day long that probably kind of i mean i don't know some monitors that's some some monitors just genuinely want out all the time yeah I know but what you mean. for the most animals, part animals, yeah yeah for the most part that kind of shows that they want to explore and that could just be for one part of the day and they want to explore you know what i mean and they, they explore yeah. the rest of their enclosure but like also doing things like switching up the hardscape every couple of months that can go a lot a long way with a lot of those animals because it switches up their environment for them um and then they go in and it's like even though they're in the same size enclosure it's it's so much stimulus for them they get to go go through the whole oh what's what's this what's under here what's what's around here they get to explore they get that curiosity back they're not just so like used to the same mundane thing every day like we're they're like, oh, I know this. This rocks here. This logs here. This is where I bath. Yeah, no, exactly. This is where I poop. This is where I drink. <clears throat> Good to switch it up. No, I agree. It's again, I'll be completely honest, and might be food for thought for you. Um, and I don't mean this in a condescending way, but as an older keeper's thoughts for you to chew on as you progress in your and anyone listening for that matter, it doesn't matter. But it just because I feel like I've come to a point in my keeping which I've never been at. And I've been keeping 10 years now. And this is the first time in my life that I've really been at this stage. Mm -hmm. But like, I want all of my animals in walk-ins, right? We all do. Mm -hmm. But that's, it's not feasible, right? It's not yeah. feasible. Like it might yeah. be in 15 years, right? So Mango, mm -hmm. as an old, disabled, bloody old age pensioner, and when she's like, I don't know, 30, might get a walk-in. So with that being said, 
does that mean I should buy more animals and then have smaller enclosures? You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, you've got, let's just say you've got an eight foot wall. Let's say 10 foot wall. Let's Mm -hmm. say nine foot wall. Nine foot wall, because you've got three by three by three. So you've got a nine foot wall. So you know, Mm -hmm. you okay, I can get three enclosures in there. Mm -hmm. But what's stopping you from getting two? Like four and a half foot. You see what I'm saying? It's, no, it's I, hard... I, I, yeah, hundred percent. And actually, as I, so like, even when I finished all these enclosures, once I, I built the blue trees last, um, and when I built them up and I saw the four foot, I was like, God damn, like it's only one foot, but it adds so much more volume and space. So like, I would have rather put all of the current tree monitors. I like all the, all the three foot tree monitors, I'd say all the three foot species, basically everybody yeah. but the McRae. Or the uh, McRae, whatever. McRae I, McRae I, McRae, McRae, McRae I, I think is more right. Um, That's what I say. A lot of people say McRae though. McRae, yeah. Because it's Duncan yeah. McRae that found them, so people say McRae. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Um, yeah. but yeah, I, I would have rather put all the three foot species in those four foot enclosures, and then all the blue trees in five foot enclosures, and that's for each. But the thing that does kind of save me, and what I really like, is when I open up those tunnels. It's like each tree monitor has access to their own six by three by four. Oh no, a hundred percent. I like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I do. I do get what you're saying, and I have had that thought. It's just, I think you have to if you're if we're gonna want to be keepers, like we have to accept that. Like it, it's uh, one thing that I always remember. Ty Park uh, is a big. He owns Iguana Land, which is yeah, like yeah, yeah. The coolest. That's that's the reptile zoo that I look up to. That's what I want to be like. So any of you ever in Florida? You should go to type go to Iguana Land. It's I haven't been there um, since it opened. I went before it opened. I'm going for the Parenti, and that's it. Oh man, the per- <laughs> I, see, I got, I only got to see it. Uh, he had like just gotten it when I was there. I only got to see the one. Now I think he has a pair there, or I maybe a trio. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, but he told me when I talked to him, uh, like, sure, it's important to obviously if you have an arboreal species to offer the arboreal enclosure, right? Mm. Like. You want it to be taller than it is long or wide or at least a certain height um, so that they're above the ground and they, they, they're they at the top of the room, essentially. Or they feel like they're at the top of the room. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But when we're talking, like like it's it's simply impossible to replicate what they're actually going to be experiencing in the wild. Oh, of like course, they're going to be yeah. climbing up 60, 70 foot trees oh, of course. and basking up there. Like you can't, can't do that. And even in a zoo setting, like. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not gonna course. climb up a, a ladder every day to go try to feed them off the tongs. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah, no, it's not the same. I think it's important to do I just do uh, just to offer the most space you can for each animal. Like like even right now, I am starting to kind of like freak out. Like I want I want a warehouse or an office really bad because I it's it's some of my like my tree monitors I just got all upgraded. Happy with those, but like mm-hmm. that's only half of my collection. I also have. My the iguanas, iguanas that are now next dragon, up and get upgraded. Yeah. The black dragons getting upgraded tomorrow. Um, nice. So like, when it comes to that, like it is actually like, it, I'm realizing it's taking up a lot of space, and I would like to offer a lot more room to like they're all. I don't know. I would like to offer a lot more room, kind of like what you're saying, like what you what you've been realizing. Like it's just we really care about these animals so much. It's like. Yeah we just want to give them the best, but we try, I think it's, I think as long as you are always giving them the most and not like overbuying, like know your limit of what you can hold. Cause like, like right now, like I have a, like I have a very large collection, but like it's mm. spread out over. Well, if you count that tree monitor room as two rooms since I had that second room, I don't know if you kind of saw it. Um, I have it split between five different rooms. I have my collection split between five different rooms. So yeah. it's like, I I have the space, but it's becoming a huge toll on me myself because that's a lot of a lot of work, Mouth, so, a lot of time, yeah. a lot of energy. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. I'll even admit my fault. Like, I I should have. I, I I've got too many animals. I have too many yeah. animals. No, I'm at, at my same, limit. Yeah, like I, I'm definitely at my limit right now. Like, I, yeah. I But getting more tree monitors to me is different because doing the same care yes. for one animal is yes. way easier than doing. I will agree with that. For, yes. for for doing the same care for fifteen different animals is way easier than doing the same than different care for like three different animals even. Yeah. Like way you, easier. You can't, for example, like 
So just just quickly, I just want to touch on Father Blue because we're we're moving away from this. So I just want to touch it. Um, I'm just saying, if you wanted to give them bigger cages, you can. I have the ability to add 20 more monitors, but I keep what I have in and maximum cages. The problem is, right? I so, mean, mine are in big cages, so I don't really understand what he's saying by no, that. What it's... what he's saying is, I think, is because I said about going bigger, and he's saying you can if you want to. You don't oh. have to. Um, you don't have to have them not in small. But you could, like I said about the nine foot wall that I think he commented mm -hmm. as I was when I was yeah. saying that. So you could go four and a half by three by five instead of the three, um, in which is a question I was asking. But my brain at the minute with the mangroves is like, I really want to breed mangroves. That's my that's my only project. I, if anything else breeds, I breed Ackies. I'm trying to breed Prasinas one day. I'm trying to breed Kimberleys. I'm trying to breed Gil and I. Um, one day I'd like to do Jobiensis. But if they're all just pets if they breed they breed mm -hmm. for me i just want to breed mangroves but if all of a sudden i've got a kimberly rock monitor going into vitilogenesis and then i've got an aki in vitilogenesis and then all of a sudden one of my um i am breeding tree monitors and then my mangrove goes to cycle and then another pair starts fighting all of a sudden it's like fuck <laughs> but then if it's mm -hmm. just mangroves then yep. i can be like you're doing this because this right like he's just saying now um mm -hmm. that's why i just have one species um and thanks nick's wild world for tuning in i appreciate you great discussion um but that's what but i don't there's two snakes i have which i'm happy to sell even then i don't really want to sell my corn snakes so i'm kind of getting attached to it but i have a bread of spy <laughs> from which i'll move on um and then and then i don't really want to move on anything else because they're my pets i love them i'm attached to them so I personally, me, I'm now very cautious, even though I did nearly buy another mangrove the other day, but <laughs> I am very cautious of um, not trying to buy anything else because I know I can't. I can't. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, right. I... Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, no. That's that's how I am. Like now, especially like I'm like I, I okay. For example, like I really want to get into Odatria. I do like Odatria. They're very very cool. I also like uh, Europlatus. I've my my yeah, good friend sick. Mason. I used to keep them. They're sick, dude. They're so cool, and I would love to get into them, but like I I, I can't. I'm not because that's yeah. not that's something completely different. Like Europlatus, especially. I'd have to have a cold room. I like mm -hmm. that's com like right now. I everything that I get, I'm. It, you have to know your own your own ability. That's what it comes down to. You have to be real with yourself and like, like, can I handle this amount of like this amount of animals? Like, what what's the max amount of care that I can really like handle personally myself? You know what I mean? And then offer, like, right now I'm I'm pretty much at my limit. I I'm I'm gonna sell a couple of things, but like I don't really want to sell anything. Like I'm gonna sell like my blue iguana. I'm gonna try to sell my blue iguana. Um. But like he's he's psychotic. He's not he's yeah. not like my my necessary like good pet. Um, so that's why I like I'm I, I will keep him if it comes down to it. But if anybody wants a a male a adult blue blue iguana, iguana, he's super I mean, no, tame. He's so chill. He's 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 my best. <laughs> no, he's he actually like in reality like he can. He's he's just a typical green iguana, but he won't ever bite. That's the one good thing. He will never bite. He will tail whip you. I mean, it's green iguana. Typical yeah. iguana, at least. My other my other three are fantastic. But um things like that. Like mainly I want to sell him because he doesn't really he's not like he's not like a really treasure he's a pet and he's a, I treasure him and I it's not like I'm neglecting him, but like he's not one that I go in there and cuddle with like how yeah, I do my other yeah, iguanas. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm looking at like, okay, I wanna have if I wanna have more space to do like what I was saying, get a two point two of Bomei, that one green iguana like that fears up a crap ton of space and then i can start yeah. fitting one in i'm also like I, i'm rearranging a lot of things to be able to fit more mm -hmm. um if that makes sense but like at the same time everything i like to i never whatever you read online it's like this is the bare requ the, the minimum requirements i never like to go for that i always go for higher but i do have my own minimums and my yeah not really a maximum but i have my own minimums you know what i'm saying it's hard because like, for me, if I say yeah. to myself, what's the minimum I can fit this animal in, then I yeah. personally start to check myself. And I'm like, yeah, that is not a good mentality to have. 
exactly yeah exactly so like i think like what is the minimal like that i can keep them like thriving and happy like these new tree monitor enclosures i'm extremely happy with that size uh, that size yeah, is what, perfect yeah to me. and eddie has just said like what he was saying is just to confirm um what part back you up about taking care of one species like it's just makes oh, life yeah. a lot easier yeah um, no for sure and then completely agree on that. I work in a small zoo where we have 80 plus species of animal working with four people a day. is hard uh, with all the specialized care every day. Exactly. So, yeah. So like I have, like when you look at, like I have all these different lizards, but like I have iguanas and I have monitors and then like a yeah. few extraneous species. So like, there's not much, to, like the bearded dragons, they get salads the same as iguanas. So like mm -hmm. there's their, their care falls right into place with that. Like I, everything I look at, I'm not, like I'm not looking to get anything that's gonna like be a a huge like curve. A curve, on, on, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so, yeah, but like, yeah, there there definitely is like right now I'm kind of stressing because my Lewis eyes are growing at a very rapid rate, and I would <laughs> like to big, get them. Man. Yeah, man, and I would yeah. like to get them in very big enclosures, but it's tough to like find that space. So, like that's that's an example of like one that I may have overestimated, like. It's the we, we all yeah. do it, man. Like, for some reason, yeah. I thought it was a great idea to get six mangroves. Like, <laughs> That's yeah, you got a lot of mangroves. You know I mean? I've got the largest head. collection That's of mangroves right. in the UK. Like, Dude, I'm a That's dickhead. awesome. Like, that I'm is like, awesome, bro. Like, <laughs> Who's your great idea? Three to four foot demon lizard. Yeah, sign me up. I'll have six. Yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's funny. Then it's like, so uh, I haven't, so they're all still juveniles, like two babies, one baby to juvenile, two juveniles to sub adults, and then obviously have an adult female. So I'm like, I've got four, eight, 12, 16. I've got an 18 foot wall, which is a flat wall, which I can put vivs. So six, 12, eight. Yeah. So I could do, for example, three, six foot vivs um, by four by four. So four deep, four tall. So six by four by four. Um, but my plan is to house a pair together constantly until the female lays. So it'll be a 12 by four by four for a pair of mangroves. Um, cool. And they're, they're three foot lizards. So it's 12 foot long, four foot. Yeah four foot wide four foot deep will you speak to most people they go fucking yes like because some people just keep them in six by three by three so i'm going at 12 by four by four um i'll be completely honest with you my head right now is way too small way too small but this is me because i'm a dickhead and i i just really struggle but then i've said that on the last podcast i literally was like the problem is then all of a sudden i sell a pair so now my 12 by four by four could become a 12 by four by eight because i'm going to stack them so it'd be two 12 by four by fours so eight foot tall in total four foot deep so all of a sudden this 12 by four by four now becomes 12 by four by eight for just a pair incredible um but then my brain goes not big enough and then all of a sudden i'm to kenan sizes and then my brain goes not big enough and then all of a sudden we're back in the world and like you say we can't replicate the world i'm fully aware of that and mm. i'm fully aware it's my own insecurities and i just personally struggle because I've, I've got like a messed up brain so that's what that's the reason i was asking because i don't know what's big enough because right now these mangroves are in a six by three by three they're roughly head and body roughly that big so not very big um probably two iphones head and body um yeah they're about two foot total length with tail, but they've got a long tail. And if I'm completely honest, they stay both buried in a corner at the back of a six by three by three. Never see them. So if they stay like that forever, they could stay in a six by three by three forever. Um, but I'm planning on giving them a 12 by four by four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I think that's good. That's and see, that's why I want like a such a like I want like a, a office or a warehouse or something soon. Um because yeah i have that same mindset where i'm like no like like if i can't do the best by these lizards i shouldn't have them you know what i mean like i i want to do the best i can for them at all times i but at the same time like i think doing your best at each given time is important because then you're always going to be evolving and upgrading um yeah. so like like a year from now like a year from now i'll be i'll have a whole new tree monitor room they'll all be in twice as big of enclosures and like as long as that's what i keep doing i think that's um i think that's all that really matters and like i said just reading your reading your reptiles like making sure like like they understand like they are happy they are uh 
they're they're doing well like as long as as long as their well-being is your priority i think you're doing fine by your by your lizards and like for you specific i'm, I'm just saying like in general but like you specifically i know your prior you prioritize the lizards or the reptiles I do. for yeah. sure by like Mate, i run it i lost by so much money <laughs> oh no <laughs> same here man same i've so yeah, much that's, money. <laughs> like I, if i if it if i could i would keep every single uh bomi i egg or bomi i baby if i get babies yeah, yeah, obviously there's still a lot more than no you will I say you I'm will <laughs> but i will universe. get them no you exactly will. i always yeah. i always say that where i'm like well i i always because people like to be like oh well you know how hard it is to hatch eggs it's like yes i know that Fuck but you them. have to have the confidence to exactly <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm speaking it into it exi- into yeah existence. exactly man you've got to do uh, the work but yeah yeah Good but like I, I would thoughts. keep yeah i would keep all of them if i could but i'm I know I'm going to have to sell half of them because yeah. first off, they're the first reptiles that I'll have produced. So like, that's my first chance at real good Make income from yeah. like actually breeding these guys. Uh, but then the second I get that money, it's not like I'm going to go out and like buy myself a suit. Like that's all getting put into like a warehouse right away. However much money I can get rent for a warehouse, rent for an office, boom, more money for bigger enclosures. Boom. Like it's all every, every dime that I get, is getting poured back into this business until yeah, i have sure, the coolest biggest zoo you can imagine <laughs> the I'm coolest then, biggest reptile and then when zoo. you're rich you can fly me out and we'll do a live podcast exactly exactly <laughs> sounds great to me i'll send my plane to you <laughs> yeah exactly. with bloody um tree monitor graphics yes. on the side. tree monitor um, tree monitor air so if they're happy and breeding in the cage that's all that matters i agree to an extent i'm i don't yeah. know like i'm i'm one to speak my mind there are limits to that but for the most part yes i agree um yeah hey i have to use the bathroom really quick yeah no you shoot yeah no that's fine i can just rant man i'll Um, be two minutes no no you're good um we've been going for a long time so um but what's good everyone love from south florida uh been waiting for this podcast round two i'm sitting too close to the mic how are we doing anyway guys 15 people i don't know how many people have liked the video but can we all like the video it really helps me out um sitting here at 10 o'clock at night talking to you a lot about lizards um i've got a banner dedicated to this like comment and subscribe yeah if you could like and comment the video for me right now i'd really appreciate that um i know i'd not really i don't really like being like oh but it does really help me out and we've been doing really well on youtube lately and i'm oh god i'm trying to get that youtube money so i'm not gonna lie fiona says no don't listen to her she's a hater so um but yeah, you've caught us at the end of the... Well, I say the end. It's two hours. We've been running for two hours and 12 minutes. Um, so I imagine we'll be wrapping up soon. Um, but yeah, man. So if there's any questions you've got, drop them now. Because like I say, we're probably going to wrap up um, soon. I will read your comment, Father Blue, when Parker is back. Um, you have, Gary. I was going to comment, but I'll leave you to it. You know, I'll let you off because you've had a bad day. Um now Gary's had Gary's been through the wars, you know. I you're all right, Gary. I more than anyone. I, I don't want to say I more than anyone because that makes me sound like a dickhead. I as much as anyone understand what it's like to be in a bit in your head. So <laughs> go hit that fucking button. Or FWC will come get you. With a bolt gun. Um too soon, probably. Uh doing good just got into my new house moving the other tree monitor enclosures today starting to take down a massive one (sighs) moving with animals is the worst i fucking hate having to move with animals um got an itchy nose run up that youtube money i'm not making anything yet but one day one day i'll be filthy rich and i'll have my own private jet and i'll have mangroves on the side but for right now, I'm poor. I'm recording in a loft. That's actually quite hot. Um, it wasn't hot earlier, but sitting with the headphones in on the chair, getting a bit hot. Sorry about that. No, you're good. So Father Blue said, <clears throat> Parker, straight up, man. You're going to grow in this and shake up the whole game in a giant positive way man i can see it happening straight up i'm excited to see it happen look at father blue trying to steal my coattails i was like six months early to the party. <laughs> hey thank you thank you father blue thank I'm you joking, that means obviously. a lot no no thank you thank you both thank thank you to everybody that's shown me any amount of support i really appreciate it because that's that's what really really drives me to keep going because i mean 
I mean, this has become a lot. Like this is like I was saying earlier. Like this is like all I do now. Like I used to used to hang out with my friends, go to parties every weekend. Like I don't I don't really do that much more. I don't really hang out with big groups anymore. Like I have I I, I don't know. I everything I do is centered around lizards, tree monitors baby. or yeah, not tree, um, lizards in general. Yeah, um, so it's like yeah, like yeah. I, I appreciate when I when I get the support. That's that 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 feels the best because it reminds me to keep going, keep pushing. Cause I, I yeah, man. I I hope. Hope I can make some make some differences, make some produce some cool lizards, produce some rare lizards, some that haven't been produced. Because like I've like I've mentioned to you before, that's like one of the one of the um not one of the it's like that that that's one of the most important things to me, I guess, is like I like to really feel like I'm making a difference with breeding. Like if I was I, I could just breed a bunch of ball pythons, but like and make money that way, and say I work with reptiles as my full time job, but that's there's a hundred thousand ball python breeders and like there's really a surplus of those or like yeah. a number of different lizards so i want to make i want to actually make a difference you know what I, mean? I want to feel like i'm making a difference you know what i mean uh, for sure but, yeah. mike's coming with an interesting point i don't know if anyone i don't know if i'm the only one that thinks like this but if you think about humans we used to live outside and now we live in houses couldn't <laughs> parko agrees dude <laughs> I, I love this the I, same yeah i okay yeah this is something that i think about all the time because people like i do think of like like i want to replicate nature as much as i can um to like meet the needs of the reptiles but at the same time like like for example going back to like producing more than one clutch uh in captivity in the wild they might only be doing that because they don't have the access to that much nutrients if all the nutrients if even like they're if they're never overweight and the females are producing like i was saying not like giant clutches like every three three months but even if they were doing that i don't think their body would be cycling that many eggs that often you know what i'm saying so like yeah no i think that's i think that's a great point because it's it like the more we keep reptiles in captivity the more acclimated to captivity they're going to become because like i was saying like they are living creatures and that's even evident in like uh like green trees if you get green trees look like on social media like they are the most social of the tree monitor species yeah, right yeah. because there's so many generations of captive, captive bred, bred animals at this point yeah. that it's like instilled in their dna and just like my my iguanas for example all of my green iguanas are from tom, uh are from uh tom crutchfield so they've they're like eight or nine generations in at this point that had like i have a i have a normal green iguana my female i've posted her a couple times she's a normal green iguana but she's the most docile like one of the most docile lizards i have um and there's no way that doesn't have that's not because of captive breeding like that's that definitely plays a huge factor so i think it is important like and and like enclosure sizes like you were talking about like i think yeah. they they become accustomed as long as you're giving the mm, the individual species because that 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 more it, it 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 is still like individual bases like you might have a more active lizard than like one one tree monitor might be more active than the other yeah, yeah, yeah um yeah. but as a whole like they're gonna have like a like a base like there is gonna be like a right and a wrong you know what i mean like there is mm -hmm. like a a two by two by three for an adult tree monitor is not gonna work out you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like even if they can get all the things they need water food uh uh heat Microclimates. Sorry. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. microclimates um it's still yeah that doesn't like that. like that animal's got to be suffering to a degree because it's in a box it's in like a literal box I, that's why i like to use the word enclosure rather than cage yeah, yeah, or yeah, uh yeah, yeah. see like, i say box no matter how but you could keep your tree monitors in yeah. a 15 by 15 by 15 in my head it's a box because it's just still one of these, yeah no it, like, no and it 100 is but no, i know what like, you mean yeah. i know what you mean yeah. yeah so it's more like a house rather than a hovel yeah no yeah yeah so you're keeping yours in i don't know an american a mansion whereas some people keep theirs in a apartment yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I, yeah. I, we're using house analogies exactly. i don't fucking know but um mm -hmm. also gary you know better than to speak about ball pythons on this channel um <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have you been smoking mike pass it to me he's high on caffeine because it's the same time as me where he is which is 20 past 10 at night but we're all here for it Oh yeah, humans live outside and then evolved. Yeah, we're we're on the late time over here. We're um, what time am I up tomorrow? It's half six maybe. Um, 
working yes. on a bank holiday, committed to the cause. I need money for lizards. <laughs> um, humans lived outside and evolved to make homes for protection against animals and predators. Reptiles, not the same. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's the thing is right. This this is my take on this, right? And again, what about like dogs and cats though? That's this is where I'm going to go. My brain messed up. (laughs) No, you're good. So, all animals in captivity, no matter what they are, has been done by man, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's a dog, it's a cat, it's a horse, it's a pig, it's a sheep, it's a goat, it's a lizard, it's a spider. It doesn't matter. Every single animal in captivity is because of man, Mm -hmm. and every single animal in captivity is selfishly because of man. Right. Dogs started out as hunting. You know, we used them for our gain. We fed them the scraps, same as birds. We then learned we could farm chickens, cows, pigs, goats. So selfishly, we enslaved them. And now we selfishly enslave reptiles and put them in boxes for our own enjoyment. Anyone that thinks different is full of shit. Like we just do. I put it bluntly because it's the way that I am. And obviously there are benefits to the reptile, of course. Mm -hmm. But if reptiles were cognitive enough to say to us, would you rather be in the world or would you rather be in a box? And we're not saying a great big massive box and we're not saying a small box. That's, that's just what we're giving them. Mm-hmm. They're going to pick the wild. But if they were cognitive enough to go, do you want to be in a great big massive enclosure where you're going to have all your food, you've got your microclimates, you're going to have, they're probably going to pick that if they were smart enough because we would. But then it is down to that's even more reason down to us as a keeper, like you were saying, to mix up the enclosure, to stimulate their brain, to give them enrichment, to to make sure that their existence in captivity isn't shit. Yeah. Because we have taken them from the wild, regardless if that was 15 generations ago or yesterday, we have taken them from the wild. So the least we can do is give them the best lighting possible, full spectrum LEDs, full spectrum UVB halogen heating for infrared um a infrared b uva uvb obviously with the lights full color spectrum leds ideally life plants i mean i've tried it and the locusts fucking eat it so here we are um (laughs) you know if they need deep soil deep soil if they need water bowls water bowls if they need high humidity high humidity so as long as you're meeting all these animals needs and mentally stimulating them in an enclosure that is big enough for them to achieve all and exhibit all natural behaviors. I'm all right with it. Yeah. Especially if it's captive bred. Yeah. Captive bred. I'm a bit more like, okay, it's wild caught animals that I get really fucked off with that are in shit enclosures, Mm -hmm. even good enclosures. I still get annoyed, (laughs) but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, No, I, I, yeah, I agree with, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, yeah, see, I, I think of it like this though. Like I do, it is without a doubt like the reptile hobby i mean it is obviously for human enjoyment and hmm, which is nothing wrong that. with that but yeah. that is the reality of it yeah but see and see i also but i also think of it as like in a way as long as you are doing it correctly we are giving these animals a better life because there's there is a lot of harsh conditions out in the wild and like yes like that's how nature is that's like what a tree monitor was built to do or what a lizard was built to do or <clears throat> a snake whatever um but I don't know. I don't. Part of me can't ignore that. I feel like there's no way once they get accustomed, as long as you can make them feel accustomed and comfortable to like, like okay, like whoa, I actually have a place to explore. Like they, if you give them stimulation and you give them a roof over their head, essentially, mm-hmm. it's like I think of it as like you have dogs living on the street starving. Obviously, that's because they've been like uh domesticated to the point where they can't even but they can still hunt to a degree but like obviously if they're let loose in the suburbs there's or not if they're, like a, or if they're a pug there's not really yeah. a lot they can do <laughs> exactly yeah but, yeah, yeah. but, but yeah. like in the same way an an a dog that's in captivity is also suffering in a different way but in that same sort of way if we have a dog that's in an apartment that doesn't get walked and like, mm-hmm. let's say it's like a german shepherd like a yeah. a big dog that needs exercise that wants to move and you're keeping it in an apartment. It only gets sun from the balcony. You don't take it on walks. You're lazy. That's like that's on that. That's not necessarily like the that's the fault of the human itself, not necessarily the fault of like captivity. You know, get what I'm saying? Like, uh, no, no, I understand what you're saying, but obviously, like, yeah, like you, like what you were bad. saying. Yeah, yeah. like there's, there's good and good bad. bad. Yeah, you can't avoid it, but but yeah, if humans so, never yeah. evolved, there would be. 90% there wouldn't of the be issues any rare species anim- 
or like any, there, well, there would still be rare species, but like they wouldn't be struggling in numbers. We wouldn't. No, have you to wouldn't go have deforestation. Them. You wouldn't yeah. have pollution. No, yeah, you wouldn't yeah. have man-made diseases. Like, I don't get me wrong. Saying. Like this captive arc shit that we all do, um, mm. is because we fucked up. And it's not necessarily mm-hmm. you or I or potentially people listening to this podcast, but the people that kept your Prasinus, the people that kept my mates McCrayi, the people that keep their German shepherds in apartments, the people that keep seen us in three by two by twos like it's not everyone but the mm-hmm. problem is they are out there and for me personally the whole time that there's a negative which there will always be mm-hmm. i will struggle with captivity and that's just my personal opinion i am personally not against captivity because if i was i wouldn't be on here talking to you about keeper lizards and boxes that i do mm-hmm. you know what i mean so i'm not against it but yeah i'm aware of how shit it can be yeah for some animals, all animals, this is mm-hmm. why I don't eat any fish at all, and I don't eat beef, um, because of environmental reasons and my personal beliefs and buy kill and all that other shit. And mm-hmm. I don't go fucking preaching about it because I don't care. I don't want a virtual signal. I do it for me and my beliefs. I couldn't give a fuck about anyone else's. I just do it for me, and then I get to some people. The problem is with the, with the world. I say to some people this, and they go, oh, well, you eat chicken. Like, chickens have feelings too. I'm like, yeah, they do. But, like, I'm doing my little bit for my personal beliefs. Like, fuck off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem is people won't... So, for example, someone will say to you, your enclosures aren't big enough. Someone will say to you, your enclosures are massive. You will never please. Same with me with my 12 by 4 by 4. Some people will go, Mm -hmm. that's disgusting. Some people will go, fucking hell, that's incredible. You can't win. So as long as you personally, as the keeper, within reason know that you're fulfilling your animals lives your dogs your cats your reptiles your birds you know if you're doing everything you can within your ability and you're constantly learning evolving and growing to benefit the lives of your captive Mm -hmm. that's all you can ask for because like i say no matter what someone somewhere is going to say something about something so you can't win yeah exactly no i i I totally agree with you yeah yeah. it's there's it's a shame it's yeah because like i look at it as like we're fighting the good fight and like i was saying like that's why i like to work with the rare species um but i never really thought about like that like they wouldn't be rare species if it weren't for humans to begin with (laughs) so like even if it's not directly me it helps like that's why again like I, i feel like i'm making a difference with like like if I can produce the land. Oh, for sure you are, mate. hundred percent. And I don't want you to be yeah. like, oh God, Jesus Christ, bro. Because you, mate, no, the no, first no, no, time no. round, I told you how passionate you are. This oh, time yeah, round, yeah. You, I can see how much you've grown as a person, as a keeper. Your passion has grown. Your enclosures have grown. Your knowledge has grown. That your enthusiasm has grown. But, and you're fucking, you, let's just say you're 20 because happy birthday in five days. Yeah. Thank you're you. 20 years old man so imagine what <laughs> you're going to be doing when you're my age because i'm 30 next year so imagine what you're going to be doing when you're my age and then imagine what you're going to be doing in 20 years time if, you know what i mean and when you're the sole biggest breeder of bloody captive bred bohemian in america <laughs> all these people not that you get many anyway but all these people that said shit you can be like well look now like you don't have to take them from the wild because of me because exactly. I took the punt and spent the money and put the time in and put the work in 20 years ago. And I brought the two pairs and I did this and I did that. And regardless of how big or small enclosures or regardless of how good the lighting or regardless of how good the diet in 20 years time, if you're successful for the species, your mistakes, trials, tribulations will set the way and pave the way. So the species in 20 years time are successful. Exactly. Like, no one can be the best. <laughs> yeah as soon as no, they yeah fight, you know what i mean yeah, yeah no 100 percent. yeah it's always any 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 effort towards the cause is helpful yeah like, and i think a lot of people yeah. look at the negatives so quickly mm-hmm. but like for example let's just say someone breeding mangroves if they keep them in shit enclosures but they're breeding mangroves yeah yeah no yeah exactly <laughs> yeah there's good and bad yeah like mm-hmm. <clears throat> you can't you can't win mate if this is why i don't like the reptile hobby because no matter <laughs> what you do some yeah. prick somewhere is gonna be like no and i'm like well yep. what are you doing so, <laughs> exactly yeah it's but, yeah but it's yeah just, well, that's, um... that's any industry that's just <laughs> we'll, humans we'll calm down humans. off that tangent it's way too late <laughs> for me to get riled up like that so <laughs> um thoughts on best cages best cage size for breeding i've heard an experiment have a pair in a huge cage they won't breed versus being able to separate them 
and give them individual smaller cages will get them to go. So we have touched on this earlier, so we'll touch on it quickly again. If you want to take that one, your um, opinion? Yeah, so I... He's saying separate them in individual so, small yeah, cages. Yeah, so he's we'll, saying... Oh, it's so like separate them cages. and bring them back? Yeah. Okay, got you. Um. Yeah, so I... I don't know. I think it depends depends on the species you're working with, definitely. But I definitely think if you're going for breeding, offering the largest possible enclosures for them is always going to be your better route. Like I, I personally believe, for example, like animals like tricolored monitors that people say, oh, they're impossible to breed. They're impossible to breed. You can't breed them. Well, like, what did you try to breed them? Like, did you just yeah. throw them together in like a six by three by three and yeah. like, just wait? Or like, did you like for a nerve? Because tricolors, from what I've heard, are like extremely defensive and extremely nervous so that reminds me of tree monitors you know what i mean like tree monitors are just smaller so like you know they're, they're not defensive but they're extremely nervous they're way more nervous than your typical monitor for the most part <clears throat> um so i think if you have a monitor like that it's important to give them a big enough enclosure to allow them to feel safe and like they have their own area like uh, even if you have to do things like like how when i went into my my room, covered I had up. blankets yeah. exactly things like that like even if it's more even if it's harder for you the keeper if it's benefiting the animal like you should do it like that's that's more important than saying just like this size is good like yeah understand your animals and understand what would make them the most happy 100%. that's what i'm saying and basically, like I've always said, so I'll just summarize what I've been saying to people because it's my theory and I like to claim it. Um, so I used to keep my mangrove in a six by three by three. She was laying eggs. Um, I reckon the cage was too small. I upgraded her to an eight by three by three. If she didn't lay eggs in the eight by three by three, it's automatic to assume, oh, she's not happy. But the reality mm -hmm. is I can't meet the requirements in the bigger enclosure. Um, exactly. She is laying eggs in the eight by three by three. I'm upgrading her again in the next <clears throat> reality it will be six to eight months. Um, so I'm upgrading her again this year, hopefully towards the end of the year. Um, and if she doesn't lay her eggs consistently like she's been doing in the bigger enclosure, then that just means it's me and I can't meet her stimulus in the bigger enclosure. It doesn't mean she's unhappy in the bigger enclosure. Mm -hmm. so um exactly yeah. yeah yeah that's why that's why like i like that question's so hard to answer it's so hard to like answer just like like when people people will dm me and be like uh like why why is my monitor acting like this or something and it's like okay well like i need you to give me like yeah the, the full rundown yeah. before i could because it could be a number of different things that's why it's like i didn't even understand it myself until like the past few months honestly like it's really you got to just get in there and try it yourself like you got to just you got to really spend that you got to put in the effort to like really like like watch your lizards just watch them like just uh, like look at them and understand what they're doing and um yeah and go into i, I just read what father blue said i really like um yeah and i've heard that too where people because i I want to be careful about what I say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so like, no, I totally agree with that because I have heard that too. And I've seen that, but like I, when we talk about keeping them in such small enclosures like that, to me, that looks, that's like them, they're treating them as tools in that sense. Like all they want to see is the eggs. They don't give yeah, a shit. Money, if, money, money, money. Yeah, exactly. And that's not only are you like, I feel like you're less likely to get consistent eggs doing it that way, because I, in my opinion, it's always going to be the mental state of the lizards. That's going to be what determines breeding most of all. Um, but yeah, like my enclosures at the Bomi I were in that they bred in, those are technically at the time they were six by three by five enclosures and they explored every inch of that, the two of them. And they were, they are, well now, now it's, now I have them separate. So they're each in their own individual but like even in those like they are all my tree monitors they go up they bask for about 15 20 minutes at a time and then they just go all around they send another uvb in the mornings and uh in the afternoons but during like the middle of the day when the heat's on they're just go 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 and like yeah. they're not like trying to get out like they're just like looking around looking down here i'll feed them they'll run across the enclosure run out on my arm run back like seeing things like that is what like really shows you like okay my lizard's happy like my yeah, reptiles sure, my reptiles man. doing good but yeah, yeah. But gary says he wishes he had the knowledge and spirit um 
when I was your age, Park was going <laughs> to be great things in the um the, uh, Park was going to do big things, big, big, great things by the fucking hell, Gary, it's too late. Big great things by the time he's my age. Keep it up. I'll have to see uh my family in Phoenix and make a trip. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And yeah, any anybody that's ever in Phoenix, just reach out. I I would love to give tours. I don't get too often because most of the people I, I kind of got into this hobby like on my own accord. Uh, like I don't really have uh, like all my friends, all my family or I guess you could say normal people. <laughs> they are yeah, yeah, they yeah. aren't obsessed with reptiles like like us. But hey, nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, always love to show off the collection. So anybody just let me know. I'm I'm very, very open to having people over for sure. I'll, I'll be over tomorrow. Um <laughs> <laughs> do tree monitors have strict we haven't even touched on this but also as well if you have to dip at any point mate mm. just let me know because we have been going for a long time i appreciate no, your time. i'm good i'm good so, I, I should be good until about three that then i i just need to go feed everybody but yeah I mean, no, honestly fine. i can keep answering questions and just go so, feed. yeah of... everyone any final questions because we were going to start wrapping up in the next 15 20 minutes um do tree monitors have strict humidity and temperature parameters? I've heard of people keeping them consistently above 70, while some let them go to 50. I like this. So I have changed a lot of what I used to do. So I used to try to strictly keep mine at, uh, like, not like strictly try to keep them. I used to like, I, I used to let it drop a bit, but like I would try to keep them at minimum like 70, like keep them 70 to 80 at all times. But since I've in more more like a last like half year maybe maybe last year um around around the last time since we talked on the podcast i was kind of in the middle of going in i've changed a lot of what i've done so in indonesia primarily what's going to be happening is it's going to be indonesia and the surrounding areas where these other species are from uh primarily what's going to happen is it's going to rain like every night all night damn near and like early morning but well more early morning is when the when the fog is going to roll in so your bulk of your humidity is going to be at night and early morning uh ish now so what i now also something else i've thought of to like try to replicate uh like nature when the sun first rises like if in summertime sun here in arizona rises at like 5 a.m right it's not going to even start getting warm until like eight o'clock. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <clears throat> what I, but, but at the same time, there's still plenty of UVB coming in. However, it is less UVB. Um, so the heat, the reason I'm talking about the heat is because the heat plays a factor in the humidity, obviously. So like this, um, so when the heat, I, I have my UVB turn on at 7 AM for all the tree monitors. Right. And then at the same time, I have a ceramic heat emitter turn on or not ceramic heat emitter, it's a deep heat projector by Arcadia, sorry. Yep. And so then that kicks on and that will slowly raise the ambient temperature in the enclosure until about 11 o'clock when I, well, I have it shut off at 1030 and then at 11 o'clock I have the basking light turn on. So basically what happens is the nighttime temperatures are about, summertime I like to keep it at about 78. So all the enclosures are 78. I flick on the lights, there's a bit of UVB, so they start coming out, they can start absorbing that morning UVB. Mm -hmm. um and then it gradually gets up to about 80 um 80 degrees by like eight o'clock and then by 10 o'clock it's like 82 83 in the top in the bottom it's more like 78 in the middle or yeah 78 in the middle and probably more like 75 at the bottom and yeah. then uh <clears throat> after that the basking light turns on when the basking light turns on it'll also take it takes time to really heat it up but i keep my basking temperatures at about 125 120 to 125. Mm -hmm. uh, i found that to be the sweet spot i've done a bunch of experimentation and um, as long as you can keep your ambient temperatures up otherwise 125 is like they're perfect like where they really love to set out in my experience um because i'll see them sit up there and they'll bask right in the direct sunlight or the direct not sunlight but light from the basking light uh, for have you ever heard 15... of power densities? For what? Power densities. Have you learned? Have you heard? It's new, and I'm learning about it at the minute. It's more of a UK thing. But have you heard uh, of it? I'm not sure. I don't think I have. So basically, it's a load of electrical boring jargon. But I'll just summarise it. And I'm going to buy a meter, and I'm going to put it into layman's terms with certain bulbs. But basically, Roman <clears throat> Merrin. Uh, on the reptile lighting groups, he is coming up with this theory, which is basically power density. So reptiles bask at a power density of 200 watts per square meter, which basically means 
square meter, obviously the watts right under the bulb, for example, will be let's just say um let's just say a thousand, and the further you get away, you'll get to eventually two hundred watts per square meter, which is nothing to do with the wattage of your bulb or anything else. It's just a, a reading of radiation, right? So this is about when you put your hand under the basking spot where the lizards are going to bite, you're going to feel this warm glow. It's not mm-hmm. going to be harsh. It's not going to be hard. It's not going to be like, fuck, that's hot. It's not going to be like, is it warming up? It's just going to be <coughs> instantaneously within five seconds of warm glow. Mm-hmm. And what they found is lizards in the wild will come out and bask. Um, and the basking temperature is nowhere near, for example, let's just say Akin Forest. So an Akin monitor will come out and work, bask in the wild. The rock is only reading... 90 degrees but the lizards managed to get up to temperature and go about his day and people are like well why is that well, when you yes. take the okay, power wait, no, yes. density yeah yeah so this so that's me and my vet have been talking about that so that's actually why i started turning on the uvb only in the morning because yeah. even though and if i and i've checked it a hundred times when after they've been sitting they can their bodies convert the uvb into heat so like mm. even though because this, it's there's wattage, no it's power yeah, exactly yeah. exactly it's power yeah so mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. I didn't. You have can't. You can't know without um, a meter. So basically, you can yeah. guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to buy the meter. It's about a hundred pound. Um, and you put the we- the meter under um, the basking spot, and obviously your heat lamp will be the biggest power. So, for example, say you use a hundred watt heat lamp, mm-hmm. um, your UVB will be like thirty nine watts, and then I run a lot of LEDs, so I'm running about. 40 50 watts of leds so all of a sudden i've now got 200 watts two of which don't really generate heat but they still generate power and power still has Mm -hmm. energy and energy still converts so all of this combined gives you this calculation some fucking boring shit and you put your meter under there and about 200 watts per square meter regardless of the basking spot so your basking spot could only be for example 90 degrees um but if you're hitting 200 watts per square meter then uh, 200 to 250 watts per square meter then your reptiles that's all your reptiles need interesting yeah so they're still huh. they're still working it out at the minute but a good yeah. way to check is basically put your hand under there um so for example from my understanding of it your uvb will allow them to bask but not get hot enough so yeah if, not get hot enough but it just yeah. still adds a bit of temperature 100%, that's 100 yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It just their, yeah. their bodies themselves like can, when they're taking in the uvb and absorbing it it like my yeah. vet explained it a bit more scientifically I kind yeah of so basically that. the uvb <laughs> generates a little bit of heat but it won't generate enough heat for you to get a reading with a temperature gun in the sense of like oh wow 90 degrees you'll go oh it's cold exactly. but stuff that we can't see that can be measured through this meter um will tell you is for example let's just let's just say 50 watts per square meter so you're mm-hmm. a fourth of the way to that when when you'd read the temperature gun wow you're like i'm i'm only reading this at 80 but they need to bask at 40 degrees hotter whereas mm-hmm. in fact it could be at like 65 watts per square meter obviously i don't know the figures i have to get the meter in bits and bobs um yeah but a lot of people sounds like you're already similar um it helps i'm yeah. an electrician so i basically <clears> got a concept of um of watts and power and energy and that shit mm. but um i'm still learning it myself i'm not an expert at all i'm going to ask roman to come on the podcast and talk about it um because he's doing tests at the moment on Aki's. um oh, cool yeah so he's done tests on other lizards collared lizards and bits and bobs um he's got videos on it in his channel shout out roman um and he did a talk on it at a reptile conference i went to this year um it's really it's really interesting but i'm i'm a bit strapped for cash at the minute but when i get some spare money um i'm going to buy the meter i'm going to test it under all my bulbs i'm going to measure and then i'm going to say my arcadia 50 watt halogen at six inches gives me 200 watts per square meter so people don't have to buy the meter and then people can be like oh what and i can have a rig and rig it all up for people that's Um, cool yeah that's my plan long term that's my plan yeah send me send me some stuff you have on that because that actually that's really interesting to me me and my i'll send you roman's channel about... yeah cool okay yeah yeah cool yeah, that'd be you great can go yeah, for his videos is, yeah that is definitely something i want to i want yeah, to i don't know if you're on the reptile advanced reptile husbandry and the reptile lighting group on i think facebook, i am i don't use facebook because it's a fucking I'm, cesspit i'm bad about facebook i'm just yeah. bad about facebook because i'm 20 <laughs> like yeah. that, that missed my facebook was <laughs> you're like so me. old man <laughs> no yeah. yeah no i'm just kidding um but yeah. um i'll send you roman stuff um 
oh you yeah check yeah. it out because he's he's got some he's got some stuff on youtube i'll find his channel for you and send it to you um <laughs> and if, if i forget then just message me and i'll i'll sort of do it but yeah what's the minimum size for any i'll be completely honest with you thank you for tuning in but i'm going to be brutally honest because this is who i am as a person if you're thinking about a minimum enclosure size you shouldn't buy the animal that's my honest opinion so the minimum enclosure side is the biggest you can fit in that space. And if that biggest is not bigger than the online recommended minimum, you can't have the animal. That's my opinion on that. Parker, what's your opinion? <laughs> I mean, um, like I'd say like I could tell you like a good size, but like, I don't know. It depends. Because like when I get new tree monitors in, um, like like my Bioc, for example, like you saw that enclosure she's in. That's just mm -hmm. a quarantine enclosure. But like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's tough. Um, I agree with what you're saying, definitely. But like, I would say if you're getting an adult tree monitor, like, just the largest you can offer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the largest. There's not really like a right answer to that. I the large, but like, the largest that you can control. You have to. You have to also keep in mind like the ability to, because like for example, I live in Arizona, so like the the cold is not really an issue in the winter, even when it gets cold here. You know what I'm like? It's at the coldest it's like 40 degrees at night whereas other people are living in like colorado trying to keep lizards like it's getting like negative 10 degrees fahrenheit sorry i, I don't I'm, I'm not good about celsius no, <laughs> uh, or conversion typical american i know no that's fine um, I'll, con I'll convert it for you now but, yeah. <clears throat> but um but yeah no i yeah definitely just the most you can offer I would I, I like my three by three by five. I would say that's like a I would say that's the minimum. Like I, I, I even even those like I, I want to upgrade them from those. Like I'm not planning on having those in there for long. Um, hmm. I hopefully want to. I mean, if I get these if I get these bomi eggs, then by the end of the year, hopefully I can actually have a, a <laughs> an office or a warehouse. And when I get that, then I, I, I would like each individual tree monitor in a five by three by six raised mm -hmm. up a foot. Mm -hmm. I when it like like I was saying earlier when I talked with Ty Park like the difference between like a five foot enclosure and like a seven foot enclosure at that point it's really more what's accessible to the keeper because mm -hmm. especially if I'm gonna raise it up and like I'm not I'm not super tall like I'm like five ten so like mm -hmm. the six foot area like when it's about six feet above I'm gonna be head, screwed at eight perfect. foot because I'm five foot eight and I'm gonna have a mangrove that's eight foot off the floor yeah that, that's gonna gotta get a ladder for sure me. yeah. Yeah, so, good luck getting those those big water tubs. Well, out the, too. the bottom of the viv will be four foot, so it'll be four foot because again they'll be four foot on four oh, foot. Okay. So gotcha. it'd be so they can get up to eight foot, but the yeah. bottom of the viv will be four foot. Um, but I'll be putting gotcha. my nice ones at the top because God help me, mango four foot off yeah. the floor. That's like hair on me because I'm a short man just get flying. Your yeah, fuck that. So yeah, four by two by funny. four. I've heard this is a minimum for a tree monitor. So I'll be honest again. I'm always honest. Everyone, I don't like that size at all. See, that's so why I, I have a see. five by two by four at the moment with my tree monitor in, and it's tiny. It's yeah. tiny because I was yeah. like, oh, minimum four by two by four. I'll get a foot taller. Is it like you say, a bit bigger than on the on online? And again, I'm happy to admit where I've made mistakes. Again, I'm building an eight by two and a half by seven, um, and eventually that will house just a pair. So I'm mm -hmm. going to have a pair of tree monitors in an eight foot long, two and a half foot deep, seven foot tall, because keeping one in a five tall, four wide, two deep, I'm like, yeah, okay, it works. It does work. He's healthy, happy, but it is just too small. There is no point in saying it's not. It is just too small. Two foot deep as well. Like if you can go at least two and a half foot deep, ideally three foot, like you were saying earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at yeah. least See, two and I a just... half foot. I just hate the two foot measurement. I just don't like it for, for yeah, any lizard the... that's not that's over two feet. I just don't like it. No, it's just, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I just it's too it's too small. Even if you even if you have like four feet, even like that's why like I didn't want to do like like four by twos or, or like uh for my new enclosures. Like I wanted that three foot because it changes it from like like a wall. Like they can only scale a wall. Like it's almost it changes it from like a two dimensional enclosure to a three dimensional enclosure with just that extra foot. And like now they have like like depth to the entire enclosure. All right, this is your chance, Parker. Do you know any good places I can buy cages? Camo cages. <laughs> <laughs> if you live in the US, if you live in Arizona, even better, because we'll come deliver it to you. I, I I used to work for I still work for Camo Cages. He's he's uh he's the owner Bailey Cooper is one of my like best friends, um, but <clears throat> for the time being and actually answering 
uh, Father Blue's question simultaneously. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I I worked for I I still kind of do work for him. Um, I also worked at a reptile store, Predators Reptile Center. Uh, but I quit that about two months ago now, a month and a half ago, mainly for the reason I started realizing like how much risk I was taking working at a store like that which deals with a lot of imported animals and just a lot of animals in general and like the risk of tracking something home to my collection. So when I got the Bomi eye, I was like, mm, I quit. Cause if I bring home something and give it to the Bomi eye, I'll lose my yeah. mind. So, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so for right now I haven't, I'm gonna, I, I have time to get a job. I haven't had time the past two months because I'm, uh, building this whole reptile room. And like, it's not just like, I'm just building this reptile room. I also have to, I live 20 minutes from here in Tempe and uh, so like are in like around Phoenix area. Um, so <clears throat> I have to drive back and forth between my two collections like throughout the day because it's like I well now I thank God I got my male Bomi I moved over here today because it's mainly just having two tree monitors at my house that made it so difficult because like the yeah. shinies, the lanthos, the turtles uh, and my black dragon are the only ones at my house <clears throat> and the Williams eye. And all of those can kind of be dealt with like right in the morning and it's kind of quick, but the yeah, tree yeah, monitors yeah. require a lot of, at least my methods of like how I, cause I don't like feeding cups personally. I hate them. Honestly, I like, I like the arboreal water cups, but I hate using them for feeding because then I don't know how much they're all actually eating. Yeah. And like, I like to be in control of their diet. Cause that's how I know for sure. Like I'm not going to give them fatty liver disease or anything like that. <clears throat> um but yeah so so right now full-time reptiles um hopefully i mean i don't know if i get keeper yeah if i get if i get yellow eggs and bomi eye eggs i mean shit i might just not get a job again (laughs) and just just keep trying to trying to work with this but um yeah yeah for right now for right now i'm i'm kind of just cruising just, just grinding at you. The... You're young, man. You got not, time. not even. I, I don't know why I said cruising. I'm definitely not cruising. I sleep like f- I literally sleep like three or four hours a night most nights. Yeah. Every now and then I get my get my rest, but like I'm just yeah. There's always something to be done. Always don't forget to sleep, man. I've learned the other day if you don't sleep eight hours a day, it'll age you ten years in the space of two. So don't don't. Yeah, sleep I need to and... only only a couple more. I'm now that I'm almost done. I just have to do. After we're done with this, I have to go set up my male blues enclosure, and I'll get that done tonight. But that won't take me too long. And then uh, once my female Bomi I drops her eggs, she's the last one to be moved over here. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> then it's just the three iguanas. It's so, never stop, never uh, resting when you have animals. Mm-hmm. There's never rest. Always mate. Something. something to do. Yeah, and if right. and if you're resting and you say there's nothing to do, you're doing something wrong. You are doing, doing something wrong, wrong man. That's so Longfield, I went to the ahh with and he's saying the talks were recorded which they were and they might be out yet which is the talk on the power density so if they're out mm. i will try and find them cool um and i will send them your way uh yeah, exactly paul speak it mate you know me i'm not scared to speak my mind also 21 people please like the oh yeah video. i never went back oops sorry yeah. didn't mean to hey. interrupt you no you're fine I... what are you, what are you want to go uh, back on who uh the, the humidity, oh, the humidity, the humidity yeah. question i never never finished on Where that are my you're uh, um, you're miles ahead of me. Where am I? <clears throat> okay, no. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, I've got it. yeah. I've got um, it. yeah. Sorry. So basically, so my humidity levels. I'll just like kind of lay it out. So in the morning, without I'll kind of explain it a bit too, because I, I was I, I I go into so much detail, but I feel the need to because like <laughs> yeah. I personally like to like if someone doesn't go into strict detail, they're just like oh, eighty percent in the morning, sixty percent at night. I'm like, okay, but why? Like like you have to, I, I always like to know the reasoning. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so so typically I shoot for like overnight. I like it to sit in the 80s at, at the the like throughout the night, preferably like 80 to 85 in like the wet season. Like keep it really humid in there, <clears throat> and then uh, in the morning and mid afternoon, I like it to sit about 70. By nighttime, not nighttime, by like late afternoon, nighttime, I it. The lowest I'll let it get is like 60. It gets to about 60, and I like it. I like them to spend time at that for a bit of a for a good amount of a period because every animal needs a period to dry out, and like mm-hmm. it's it's good for their skin just as much as being in humidity is. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, and in Indonesia, that's pretty much like I was explaining earlier, like it's going to rain all night and then it's not really going to rain throughout the day, obviously with the exception of like when monsoons come through, that's a whole different story. That's when you would do wet seasons and drop temps. <clears throat> and that's what we were talking about with what we think causes breeding and et cetera. Um, but yeah, when it comes to just like a normal day, like a normal summer day, it's probably there's the, the sun is going to be beating down and it's going to be above the canopy. It's going to be getting a lot hotter than below the canopy, obviously. Um, but it's still going to dry out the area. Like it's, there's still going to be, it's still going to be about like, I'd say around 60% is at least the sweet spot that I'm sitting at. I really want to go to Indonesia myself and, like take all these readings myself because I, I I talk all this like and it's like things I've read online and stuff but it's like you can read anything online and yeah. I'd like to what I read is and I, and I talk to reputable people um that's a lot of where I get a lot of my information from shout out Cody Cop again I, if I'm saying his last name right I hope I am I'm gonna message him after this I, I hope I wasn't butchering it this whole time I don't know how else you'd say it but yeah I, I yeah I think it's oh, that it's not gonna be Cope because it's double P yeah it? yeah it's yeah. double yeah K O P P yeah. It's Cody Cop for this story, anyway. Yeah, for for this podcast, it's Cody Cop. Yeah, it's Cody Cop. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much my humidity level. So then, and then when I I missed it, I missed so my misting times. I missed in the morning at seven a.m. No, seven thirty. Because I gave them about thirty minutes to come out of uh, their log wherever they're sleeping, and primarily they're going to do a lot of their drinking in the morning. I would at least that's. From my experience, I, they're more likely to drink every morning than they are if I give them drinks in the afternoon. They still yeah. will drink in the afternoon sometimes. It kind of just depends, but uh, I like doing it in the morning. And so the misting, the mist king kicks on for a minute 30 at like uh, 7.30, and then I have it kick on for another 45 seconds at 11, right when the basking light temp turns on. Mm -hmm. And then I don't kick it on again until 8 o'clock, like right when the lights turn off. And then, yeah. That's pretty much my humidity levels, I would say. Makes sense. <clears throat> three foot deep should be a minimum. I don't disagree. Sadly, the wall I have is not three foot deep. It's only two and a half. So, oh, yep. Let's do it. Breach. But yeah, so yeah, that's why I went three foot. It helps. Yeah, so when you have fake backgrounds, it takes away space. The right size might be different for different people living in different places. For me, it's okay for a viv to be bigger, but a person living somewhere cold, cold spots could be a concern. The only thing I have to say on that is, like I said earlier, it's not the fact there's cold spots, it's the fact you don't know how to heat a viv correctly. Do you still have your Shinlosaurus? I do. I have I have my pair still. Uh, they're both doing good. I need to pair them up. I'm, <laughs> if I'm going to be 100% honest... Uh, I need to move my male over to my female's enclosure because she's like really, they're both adults now. They were sub adults when I got them and my female's got a lot of weight on her and I think it's possible I could get them locking up. But, uh, my male is, uh, not as nice as her. And I, I'm, I'm a little, he keeps, I, I haven't caught him when he's like out in the open. They're really seclusive or reclusive. They don't like to uh, spend a lot of time out in the open. So I haven't, and I don't really want to stick my hand under a rock or behind a rock because if any of you guys know anything about shinies, they have one of like the worst bites from what I've heard. They have, and from my experience with them, they've like, like just seen them bite bugs. And like, if they've bit the tongs a couple times, like you can feel that bite. Like it's, I don't call it a bite. I call it a chomp. Like they, they literally chomp. And uh, yeah, so I still have them. Hopefully I'll get them breeding soon. I'm going to get some bite force gloves or something and grab my mail out this week, but <laughs> nice. it's coming. I just got a lot to do. Yeah, man, that's fair. Um, I'm going to say this from Ro Ros Lagan, Ros Lagan Reptiles. I'm sorry if I butchered the name. I'm not the best reader. Um, great to hear what's happening in the hobby. You're never too old to learn. Uh, for me, if you say to people like, oh, I know it all, <laughs> you want to give up. Because you'll never know it all. There's always something to learn. So, agreed. Um, <laughs> well, shit. Before we say <laughs> goodbye, I'd like to say welcome to the fellowship, Parker. This is the fellowship of the Varanus. Now, I'm gonna get a tattoo. <laughs> this is what Gary's called. Hell the, yeah! This little chat. So, um, welcome to the fellowship of the Varanus, Parker. Join in on Sunday. Sometimes Paul does naked monitor dances whilst we speak in tongues. <laughs> yes, yeah. I do. I don't like anymore since I've got on. Uh, do you do you guys do pounds or do you guys do kg? You do pounds in America, don't you? Yeah, pounds. All right, bear with me, everyone. Two seconds. Oh wait, oh pa oh yeah, yeah pounds. Oh sorry, well, for I weight. Thought, yeah, for weight. I was thinking, I was thinking like money. No, not um, money. Yeah, I know yeah, your, yeah, I know your do dollars. Uh, let me just think. What? Um, 
bear with me everyone bear with me bear with me i'm sorry it's... um so in the last four years no three years your boy has put on 70 pounds um so i'm thick now so i no <laughs> longer get naked because i am fat um and i hate my body when i lose my 70 pounds then we will continue with the naked varanas dances but until yeah. then i'm staying a t-shirt on what do you do to control and change the oh you've already answered the question um what kind of water do you guys use for water dishes and misting i just use tap um water. yeah it depends so for me personally i can't use tap water because arizona has really really hard tap water i mean i could mm -hmm. Uh, but I prefer to filter it. I just have like a, it's like a specific, it's like a really good filter that I have just screwed onto my hose out back. <clears throat> yeah. Or I just use RO water. Um, but one thing I will say, if you're using RO water, make sure you're using remineralized RO water or just get like some sort of spring water and mix it in with that because you don't want to just offer RO water, like straight RO water, because those animals need those minerals that's commonly found in like all water, like fluoride, copper, uh, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. They, they, I, haven't, I haven't got a clue. Maybe not but copper, yeah. but um, maybe not copper, but um, they like they they need the minerals within water, basically, is what I'm saying. So you don't want to give them just straight RO. I've learned a lot of that with uh, since I started keeping more aquatic species such as shinnies and. <clears throat> oh, I haven't got and... a clue. Michael's a water man, so he might be able to shed some light because he's a fish person. But I haven't got the, a clue. Yeah, I've I've become I'm not like a fish person, but I like can i know everything about water now because I'm, I'm very very some people aren't um which their their lanthos do fine so i'm not saying it's right or wrong but uh just me personally i like to be very on top of my uh lanthanotis water uh yeah it makes uh, sense so. i can't think of the word i'm sorry uh water levels Clarity, and purity parameters parameters conditions. parameters parameters yeah parameters sorry parameters. yeah it's been a long day um <laughs> yeah, we've been, we've been talking for three hours, man. So yeah, like I say, I've been up since seven AM too. If you want to um at any point if you want to dip, just No, I'm, I'm having fun. I like I like this. It's like good, how it's good chat isn't it? Is, this is why I went live because we're yeah, like the, live fellowship, is fun. the fellowship of the Varanus is strong, man. We're only yeah. we're only small for right now, but soon we'll be taking over Middle Earth, don't you worry? Yes. You're too young to know Lord of the Rings because you're no, I've, okay. seen, I've seen Lord of the Rings. We we read that we read uh, the Hobbit in middle school. Oh, so. sick. There you go. So <laughs> one day we're going to take over Middle Earth. Um, I said this because the breeder <laughs> talked about this with me. So people people probably came in. Saying, yeah, people. The problem is people will make mistakes. If you have a big enclosure, people will forget to heat it and cold spots will kill your animals. Mm -hmm. Um it's just it's just one of those things. Um I wish I could gain weight. Uh, mate, Gary, let me tell you, right? So I'm mm -hmm. 28, 29 this year, 30 next year, as I keep telling everyone, because I'm having a midlife crisis. So I was, hang on, I need to get your American conversion rates up. So I weighed from pretty much birth to 24. I weighed 126 pounds. Yeah. I was a skinny bit of man, a very skinny bit of man. So I've, got Crohn's, like yeah, I've got Crohn's disease. So I just, I ate whatever I wanted, stayed skinny. It was great. <laughs> That's pretty much me. And then out of nowhere, for some reason, lockdown happened and I started piling on the pounds. Oh, God. See, Fee's in chat now. Who got him started? It's Gary. Blame Gary, Fee. All right. This is 11 o'clock at night and I'm talking about why I'm fat. So now I weigh 210 and I'm classed as obese. Yeah. Does this look obese to you, Gary? <laughs> now, this is this is prime. This is prime male physique right here. No, mate, I'm, I'm fat. I'm, <laughs> I'm sad. Um, and I, I, I'm right there with Gary. I wish I could put on weight. Uh, don't age shame me. It happens. Don't worry. Metabolism. I mean, Gary's older than me, but I'm age shaming him. But I don't know how old you are, Gary, but I know you're older than me. I need to assume you're older than me. Um, I oh, yeah. What Michael said, uh, yeah, uh, RO water will suck the minerals out of them. That's that. Not only will it not give them minerals, it will suck it out of them. So like same thing with humans, like how humans can drink too much water. Um like it can just flush their systems and that, that's like one of the worst things that can happen to them so using using mineralized water is important the only reason i don't use tap water is because if you know anything about tds air, like the, the water that comes out of my faucet is like 300 uh tds or I'll ppms, for PPMs yeah. for the TTS, tds which is yeah. like really high so like arizona has and arizona is known to have uh 
really high water have a high or hard water uh with really high mineral counts so that's that's why i avoid that because it's just a bit too high but yeah i haven't got a clue yeah. i just use tap water and so far touch wood no one's died so <laughs> um <laughs> yeah thank you for saying that but i've heard different opinions like reptiles don't need minerals like mammals but i thought it was dumb yeah i mean give everyone as much as you can as physically as much as you can in the sense of minerals vitamins vitamins water just if if you can do better than what you're doing save to do better or just do better and i'm not saying that in a condescending way i'm just saying if you know there's something you can do better think about excuse me think about the steps you need to implement to be able to achieve that next step because we can all improve everything so just mm -hmm. think what is a priority and then prioritize towards that priority aquatic uv filters work great for some better water quality i have heard that as well um i don't have any because that's i don't need like those like like if you use aquatic uv filters first off that affects your uh beneficial bacteria which is what you need to make a filter actually work it's what beneficial bacteria is what breaks down ammonia um into nitrites which is then broken down into nitrates which nitrates is the least harmful part of the cycle which is what you want them and you don't want them in too much nitrates yada 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 I'll so like yeah for it. uv filters are good but it's like it's kind of it's harder to set up and my so far my lanthos aren't dirty enough to me to do that they're 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 smaller lizards they are dirty but they also like like they like high nitrates if i don't if i change their water too often the lanthos are so difficult they they have like like even though they look like they have armor they have the most sensitive skin like if i let the tds get from i try to keep them between 120 and 160 um the second they start hitting 180 or 200 even just that little bit they'll start getting that white on their nose um, yeah just from like i remember you saying this last time yeah yeah so <clears throat> since then and then also actually that reminds me from the last podcast because i was dealing with the whole eye thing do you remember or, I, or maybe it wasn't during the podcast but i had i'd reached out to you where he yeah had yeah like yeah, build up yeah. On his eye. yeah so that ended up being the uv so actually because they're a nocturnal species what i me and mason barnes who's now like one of my best friends um we that's like how we first started talking but um because he also has a pair of lanthos and he was dealing yeah, with yeah. pretty much the same thing and we couldn't figure out why but then we started talking and we were like our males are both the only ones that sit out in the sunlight or not in the, in the UV light during the yeah. day. And so essentially what would have make sense, what would, what would have made, made the most sense to me at the time is that the males are just getting too much, even though, cause like Mason was using a shade dweller, uh, Arcadia UVB and I was using like a 5.0 T5 and I had it raised up. Like he would, they're in like the one, a 1.0, maybe UBI. less in the, yeah. uh, in the Ferguson zone. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh yeah so after we took the after we we both turned off our uv within a week and a half two weeks both our males like started like shedding it off and like making a full recovery my male fully recovered in like two weeks but his his had dealt with it for a little bit longer um but now it's now his male's totally good um so i now i've talked with my vet a bit because i do believe that every animal needs at least a bit of uv i think it's just that the lanthos really need much much less than what people expect but then again see our females never had an issue at all with the uv on but the females would actually hide in the caves and stay in the shade they wouldn't be out in the uv so the male just being at the males being more confident being out in the uv was just what caused this like burns. again yeah. things like that like the most important skill i would say i've discovered as a reptile keeper is to be able to think on your feet and like just like kind of like it's it's good to talk to other people but you also want to like have your own opinions especially when dealing with like rare species like lanthos where it's you like trust I can't your just... gut man yeah yeah exactly yeah that that too like a like um like with my black tree female like i was explaining like i really wish i just trusted my gut from the start and just moved her out of that enclosure because i knew she wanted out of there i could tell yeah. she did and sure enough the second i moved her out she dropped the egg i had so. this from a peach right when i first got my job answers so this would have been july last year or june i forget um so I set it up in a semi, semi dense plants, cork tubes, this, that, and the other, like it wasn't empty at all, but it was semi empty to the point where I could see it, keep an eye on it, but it was dense enough where I could get away. Um, it was doing okay. It wasn't doing great. wasn't doing bad. And I was like, oh, it's a fresh import. Like just give it time, give it time, give it time. 
And then a couple, I've reached out to a couple of people stateside because not really many people over here have done it. So I re- reached out to a couple of people stateside and they were like, oh, no, no, you're doing it wrong. Do this, do this, do this. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't really think that's right. But I had like three people tell me more or less the same thing, which was basically sparse out the enclosure, do this, do this, do this. And these three people have had success um, acclimatizing Indicus Complex. So I was like, okay. And then within a week, a week and a half of me doing this, like you could see the animal was visibly dehydrated, stress, this, that. So I messaged them and they're like, no, 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 this is, this is what you expect. This is what you expect. You have to go through this. Pit. And I, my, the whole time before I even did this, my gut was like, you're fucking don't do this. Anyway, I'm listening to these people, listening to these people. <sighs> About three weeks in, my peach is looking like it's on death's door. And I was like, nope. Mm. So I just pulled it out and I threw it. Probably the worst thing to do, like, cause it was already looking worse. And I threw it in a fully planted bioactive naturalistic enclosure and I did not touch it for months. And then I caught a glimpse of it and its colors were clean. It was hydrated. The skin was now tight, no longer like saggy, like different animal, different yeah. animal. So yeah. if I just trusted my gut and just put it in a bit more of a dense enclosure from the start, I wouldn't have had to go through all of what I went through. Um, so don't get me wrong. It's good to take experience from people and obviously... I was worried because I didn't know better. But like with these mangroves, these are all fresh wild caught. They came straight off the plane, straight to me. They didn't even go to pet shops. They went straight to me. Um, I didn't listen to fucking anyone. I just did what I thought was best and all five are thriving. So and mm. yeah, I had to go through, I had to earn my stripes to get to this place. You know, like three, four years ago, I wouldn't be able to do that. I probably would have killed two or three of them. Like that's the reality yeah. of the situation. But mm-hmm. Trust your gut, think on your feet, know Agreed. what's best for your animals in your situation. Sometimes you're not going to have the answers and sometimes you are going to fuck up. And what's important is to share that with people so they don't fuck up and have the same mistakes that you've made, you know? Yep. Agreed. So, totally agree. Um, they're all talking about water. So, <laughs> I mean, we're at the three hour 10 mark. Anyone else drop final questions? But we can start wrapping up because, like I said, I have got yeah. work in the morning and it's 10 past 11 and you've got <laughs> shit to do. Yeah. So, before we do wrap up, thank you very much for coming on. Um, yeah. Appreciate Thanks so you much talking for having me, me for three hours. <laughs> yeah, man. I appreciate it. Me too, man. I love talking lizards. Oh, literally, I said to Fee, right? I was like, um, she's probably asleep now so i saw her in chat a little bit and she was like is it going to be a late one i said i'll oh, probably not i'd probably be only like an hour and a half because i ended up the last podcast i just did was just show three hours because it was with like not that you're not my mate but it was like my best mate in the reptile hobby so i knew we would be talking 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 yeah um and here we are three hours 10 three hours 11 <laughs> minutes and 45 oh he's still awake everyone oh god oh. i'm in i'm in trouble shit let's Uh-oh. keep going <laughs> so um <laughs> But yeah, thank you, mate. Like I say, I said it earlier, I'll say it again. You're you're fucking 20 years old. Your passion is like, I said to you last time, Like I get excited when I hear you talk because you're so (laughs) passionate. You know, your knowledge is expanding tenfold. You're surrounding yourself by the sounds of it with good, good people that are only going to benefit you and your reptiles. You know, you're, you're trying to do your best by your animals. You're evolving, you're growing, you're keeping... (laughs) She wants to show me something before she sleeps. Fucking God, <laughs> God help me. Um, but yeah, like I say, mate, you're, I'm so, I said to you last time, like, I saw your page however many months ago and I was like, this guy's got some sick lizards. So I reached out to you. I don't really remember what I said, probably along the lines of, hey kid, do you want to come on a podcast? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you were like, yeah, I'd love to, blah, blah, blah. And then a second, I think like within 20 minutes of speaking on the podcast, I was, I even said to you, I was like, I'm so excited. And I couldn't think of a better person to have on as a return guest. Cause like I say, I'm using you for your fame now that you've got all the tree monitors, but <laughs> I I'm generally excited, genuinely excited to see where you go. And I'm generally excited for you to produce, um, captive bread, Bohemi, 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 I'm excited Hopefully. for that. Thanks man. No. Yeah. Thank you so much, bro. I really, I really appreciate all your support. You're, you're one of the one of the the biggest people that that pushes me to keep going for sure and thank you for bringing me on your platform because every time i do one of these videos it it helps me out so much well no, you're good, i guess man. it's only the second time but <laughs> the last well, time it happened it i put all your links out. in the description so i've done your your instagram and your tiktok i don't know thank if you, you have youtube i i don't yet but i 
as soon as I'm done with this new tree monitor room, so I'll, I'll give you guys the rundown, uh, everyone that's listening. Yeah, 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 go, go, go. All I have left to do, I have to move my male blue tree over. This week, I'm going to build the cordensis enclosure too. So they're like, oh, that's a week there. But also on top of that, I'm going to paint all, the, you couldn't probably see it when I went in there and gave you the tour, but all, all the cages say Parker's Park at the very top of the door. <clears throat> and it's like cut out uh, in the PVC. And I want to go through and paint all that red. Mm -hmm. uh and then i also have fans that i need to go in and install so all the enclosures have fans equipped on the outside i also have bubblers that i need to add into all the water dishes because i want to add water movement um yeah. and then uh there's one other thing oh and then i also i'm playing with the idea of putting foggers in uh just for the mornings so like i can yeah. kind of simulate that that morning fog where yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and help boost the humidity that way too um but yeah once once i'm done with all that then i'm going to start really hitting youtube and instagram but i really want to do a lot more youtube um and i'm just going to really start hitting it really hard and posting yeah, man. it's a hard as many platform, videos as i can my advice is just start like yeah exactly that's the, i just, just need to start. jump in there I, I already have started filming like i have a bunch of uh i couldn't really do like a full like me building the entire tree monitor room because it was you know what pieces. was bang your first video <clears throat> would be something along the lines of like come and meet every tree monitor species or some shit like yeah. that yeah that i that i would yeah i think yeah. that'd be good and then yeah, you cause... could do a reptile room because reptile room tours do sick but my advice is to get three or four videos done mm -hmm. um and then release the reptile room video and then have like another free just let's just say three videos so release the reptile room video and then have two more videos on your channel because obviously the problem is people will go oh my fucking god yeah like all these tree monitors watch that video then all of a sudden you have no more content on your channel so then youtube's like sense. Ugh. and then you post next week and you've missed the dip so all of a sudden let's let's just hope that your first video does sick then you've got two more videos feeding my tree monitors, um, my daily maintenance or whatever. So do like free banger. So feeding, enclosure review, enclosure tour, fuck's sake, reptile room tours, and then like an enclosure build or something like that. Those three are good videos. Mm -hmm. So then the people watch your one of them, they're going to watch mm -hmm. the other two. So it doesn't matter which one grabs them. Then you've got these free videos and all of a sudden you've got a new channel with a lot of influx and YouTube's going to go, yes, push you out to fucking everybody. Because whereas I just started, my literally first video was like, hello, everyone, I'm going to talk about lizards on a podcast. And then I didn't post again for a week. <laughs> so much as I got some views because I had Instagram followers, there was yeah. nothing on my YouTube to keep people there. So I do, see what do your free videos, more videos, the better. But then obviously post them all at the same day. Done. And then one will grab someone and then they go, oh, cool. He's got feeding tree monitors. Oh, wow. He's got enclosure build. Or, oh, oh, wow. He's got... Um, a reptile room tour the reptile room tour bang yeah so that's my advice <clears throat> i know that I, thank you i like that that's that's really good advice because i probably would have just done that where i just post one video and then yeah so you do that the and then you do that yeah so yeah make sure you've got a few videos on your channel cool um, i i already have like a bunch of footage that could be pretty much put into those three like i could do i could do a couple different uh enclosure builds i could do um the actual tour of the rep. Well, I'll have to wait till I'm done to get like the yeah, full yeah, yeah. room tour. But um, but yeah, yeah. I have I have a friend of mine who's good at editing and stuff. Uh, his name's Noah. I don't, I, don't know. he, I saw him in the chat earlier. I don't know if he's still here. Probably not. He's not into yeah. lizards like that. But <laughs> to sit around <laughs> for three hours. But um, yeah. uh, yeah. I'm gonna have him help me out, and then I'm really gonna start pumping out as much content as I can. Cause for sure, like man. I was saying, like it would almost be cooler to get paid like from like social media or something like that yeah so then I, and that's like, what I want to do yeah so then i can really like not have to like obviously i'm still going to keep breeding and continue breeding and like that'd be great to make make money from that but then i don't have to be relying on them to have eggs yeah exactly match, or you want to keep one or they're born with the form or whatever exactly exactly yeah, you, it just yeah. opens up a lot more avenues for me to have the yeah. content being from me actually just like having the animals themselves and that's sure, where like a, a zoo comes into play too um yeah 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 no that's just yeah. yeah sick man like i say once once blah, 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 blah. once you've got your youtube channel let me know and i will share the shit out of it for you hell yeah man um, thank you but yeah I really enjoyed the show paul and parker thank you so much thank you for tuning in ben thank you we do obviously have in. the two wrap-up questions which you did get last time i'm pretty sure but we'll go to them again um 
But before we go into the wrap-up questions, is there anything you would like to touch on we haven't, or is there anything you would like to ask me? Um, I don't know. Uh, let's see. You, because you, I, I was realizing as we talked, you have gotten a lot more lizard. Like you got the eight mangroves or six mangroves. Um, yeah, so I got six mangroves, four gill and I, two Kimberleys. I had four Kimberleys, but I've sold two because I've got no money. So I've got six mangroves, two Kimberly, a pair of Kimberleys, four gill and I, a peach throat, a bearded dragon, a bredles, a corn snake, a tortoise, two guinea pigs, um, a bosk three tree monitors prosenus what else have i got a tarantula scorpion um i'm sure there's more i don't know another aki oh yeah three akis i said another aki three akis some baby akis um i think that's it <laughs> i think Damn that's it know. Yeah. You got you got quite the monitor collection. That's awesome. Yeah, man. that's um, awesome. Oh, uh, stick bugs. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I've got some stick bugs. Um, I, like, I like what Gary said about they say if you want to be a millionaire breeding reptiles, start out with three million. In a year, you'll have a million. Yeah, that's man. that's true, man. That's true. But I, I'm probably at a negative one million at the minute. To be honest, like I'm, oh, mate, I'm, the amount of money I spend on this shit, oh, it's fucking. I spend too yeah. much money to even admit <laughs> how much fucking money I spend on these lizards. The the good news is is now like within the past year or so I've made a lot of co- connections to where like I don't have to like like what people think I'm paying it, not for the for the lizards themselves it depends. Well, sometimes I'd be dropping bands on those. But um like for supplies and stuff I'm it's not as much of an expense as what people are Yeah, you know people. Thinking. Like same as me. I I get yeah. so I've got a cockroach guy who sadly is no longer my cockroach guy because he's um he's not getting out of it, but he's massively downsizing. So my cockroach guy, I'm not even going to shout him out because I don't want anyone to steal him because he's my cockroach <laughs> guy. But there's a there's an old guy um, that basically just loves cockroaches. So he breeds them in his garage and shit. Um, That's and funny. He's been, un- he's been unwell recently, bless him. So he's going to downsize a little bit because he wants, he generally, he's, he's generally cares for his cockroaches like this much that he's like, Oh, I can't just leave them. Like he generally wants his cockroaches to have like the fucking best lives. Like, so I know oh, my cockroaches. Nice. Yeah, he's fucking loves them, mate. <laughs> so I've offered to come over and give him a hand, sorting them all out and stuff, because I don't want him to like put himself out. So I've said to him like, if you need a hand, and he's like, no, no, don't worry, blah blah blah. But long story short, I'm gonna bulk buy fuck loads from him because I normally buy like one kg to two kg um, every six to eight weeks whenever I need them. But now I'm just gonna buy like four or five kg. Um, which is just like loads of cockroaches. Um, and I'm going to really try and breed cockroaches. I don't even know where we, why we fucking nice. started this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> just just saving saving money. Saving, oh, yeah. Thank expensive. you. This is my job to do that, but it's getting late. Yeah. No, so, no, I feel you. Yeah. And then I, I've got a locust plug, so I get cheap locusts. Um, and then, yeah, I get like... I know my green tree pooped on me because I keep smelling <clears throat> monitor poop as I like move around, but I like can't find it on my shirt. I don't, I don't know. Listen, Gary, you leave my cockroach guy alone. He's the sweetest man alive. Okay. <laughs> he's honestly, mate. He's he's the, he's just one of us, but he likes cockroaches instead of lizards. He does yeah. breed them to sell yeah. them. It's not like he keeps them all. He does sell them, but he doesn't. He doesn't supply masses, and for the most part, I buy most of them. Um. So yeah, that's my cockroach guy. Um, Hell yeah! But yeah, I've got I've got a lot, man. Um, that's awesome. I've been contemplating a downsize purely, like we said earlier. I just want to focus more on other stuff, not other stuff, but I just want to be be able to be present. For example, my little Prasinas. Um, right, everyone, bear with me. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Instagram back up. I'll talk. I'll put it back up in a second. So many likes we got on my on my post that I didn't post. Um, so this reel I posted the other day. Literally like yesterday, shameless. It's under 164,000 views now. Jesus, oh, mate, I'm, <laughs> fa- I'm famous, man. No, yeah, you keep you keep saying using me for my fame, but I <laughs> like the most viewed right. video I have is like 15k, right. I think. So this is my little girl, Kada. Ah, oh, she's so cool. I've, I, so, I have seen. I think I like this. So I don't, I don't get her out all that much. Mm-hmm. But like out of nowhere the other day, she just like came right out for food. Dude, that's and it so really... cool. Ignore my double chin, everyone. Um, <laughs> I I really want to spend more time with my animals because like this is the reason that we do it, you know? Yep. 
and like, I just don't have the time to do stuff like this oft- all too often. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's why I'm like, I need to. Oh, it's a bit blurry. But that's why I'm a bit like, I need to um, spend more time on my animals. But to do so, I need to like not have so many animals. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's up, Bam? Appreciate you stopping in. So I've been contemplating a downsize, but then also there's no one I really want to. There's no one I really want to um sell, which is kind of like oh. So I am like I was thinking about selling my Lewis size, but they're so like nice. Like I don't want to like both of them are like puppies. Like I love them so much. They're they're some of my favorites. So it's like it would save me a lot of space, but like. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna make up the space soon, so it's like I don't want to sell them now. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. I still am I still am heads or tails on selling some of them. I want to get the iguanas moved out of the shed and then see. I want to like see it all. Like I want to see the iguanas in the showers because that'll be a decent upgrade for all of them. I want to see the Lewis eyes in their new enclosures. I want to see the black dragon. I want to see it all like laid out and then because my plan is to leave the shed I have out back open for more tree monitors um and right now my plan i think i can pull that off but um won't know till i try so (laughs) i like like, i've measured it out but like i I don't know it's you can't really like like we were saying enclosure size like i'm saying these showers are good for the iguanas for now but yeah i don't know always trying to evolve yeah it's hard you like you say you don't know until um you don't know until you know and also as well yeah I, those pictures that i posted i'm just gonna get it up now because these people have obviously done it for that reason oh my god my my hang on my instagram's not loading oh my god everyone i'm sorry i'm so unprofessional so that those pictures that i posted just to show everyone the pictures that i posted um fuck's sake, it's not loading there's people commenting from the chat on those on that picture saying hello youtube so i was going to give them a shout out um <laughs> but yeah um hello bam yeah we're still going at three hours 25 minutes who knew who knew who knew yeah i i started this off by telling paul i could only really stick around for an hour and a half because i here he have is. a lot of stuff to do but you guys were i i, I liked how interactive the chat was it was too it's much good fun. isn't it this is why i, I went stick live around. yeah this is no, why it's... i went live because i like my little fellowship of varanus like my little community that i've built yeah i say mine it's not mine it's like you know but it's like everyone's here to to hang out this is what because yeah. i i was really struggling with youtube like in the sense of hi guys this is my video or like for example the episode we did just for example like i really tried to edit that one and put like clips and shit into it but i fucking hate editing and i'm just sat on my own on my laptop like this and i get in my head because i really struggle with mental health and shit anyway so i've loved the podcast but then i've got to do all the editing and shit and i'm like i hate it and i'm just like why am i doing this so then i was like i'll take it live I can interact with everyone because I really like doing Instagram live. So then I can interact with everyone on the live. Um, and then I don't have to edit because this goes straight to YouTube as I've, as it's been recorded. So I just have to be careful. I don't care what I say, but I have to just be careful. I don't fuck guests over and be like, so <laughs> like, I don't know, bloody Put them on the spot. Ask him some awkward random question. Like, <laughs> I don't know, burgers or hot dogs or some shit. And it causes the fucking <laughs> world to end. Um, yeah. but yeah, so every Sunday, <clears throat> I love Sundays now, it's Fellowship of the Varnas. So every Sunday, hopefully, touch word, like all being well, your boy will be live on YouTube for as long as it takes until three and a half hours, just straight in. Do you know what's more impressive? <laughs> so I haven't even used the toilet. This is Joe Rogan. Yeah, podcast, I, I, and I, boy and I, I gotta go again <laughs> for out. And I've been drinking a whole bottle of Lucasaid and a can of lemon fanta i've got dry <laughs> dry throat because i've been talking for three and a half hours but we've yep. not used the toilet because i'm a professional professional it's also because <laughs> i haven't really drunk much today i have to be on a sunday because i drink like two liters of water um on working days so i wee a lot but like on sundays i don't really drink so we i piss <laughs> urinate what do you want to call it yeah no, I've been saying to, fucking shit so all the way through this podcast, and then I'm like, <laughs> I need a wee. I take a little wee. It's because I'm British. Right, that was my attempt at a British accent. I need a little wee. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I say, everyone, appreciate you all tuning in. We are gonna slowly wrap this up because Fee wants to show me something if she's still in chat. Um, yeah, and my tree past... monitors are gonna be mad at me. <laughs> yeah, me and Parker's broke his routine. Just so we will <laughs> end on the two wrap up questions. Um, but like I say, like the video. Um, the bladder is strong with this one. You best believe. 
Um, got to get those watch hours up. Yeah, I fucking, I'm nearly there, guys. I'm nearly there. I'm nearly at 4,000. I'm nowhere near 4,000. I'm 3,200 out of 4,000 watch hours. And I've not even, been, not even been doing this shit for a year. Let's go, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're making you're making waves for sure. That's I already I think you have one of the most subscribed to podcasts for reptiles, at least reptile podcasts. I'm pretty sure you do. No I idea, man. I don't really look at that sort of shit. Um, yeah. yeah. I impressive, mean impressive, man. It's spoiler. Really I'm not gonna spoil spoiler, but your boy's gonna be a guest on a big podcast. Let's just say oh, that. Oh really? Yeah, man. Oh, so right. I'm, I'm excited to see that. Recording tomorrow. Um, I don't know when it'll be out. <clears throat> Hell yeah. That's but exciting, your boy, man. Your boy's pushing Varan, the Fellowship of Varanus out to masses. Yes. So, yeah, I am making moves. Um, making moves. Got to run. Yeah, no, I appreciate you chilling out, hanging out, Ben. Thank you very much. Um, this is going to add plenty. Animals at home. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, two wrap-up questions. Same as last time. One piece of advice you'd give to someone just starting the reptile hobby. Mm, now I, we can watch back to see if you'd give the same answer because I guarantee you forgot what you said. And I, don't I know yep, said. I did forget what I was. <laughs> I did forget what I said for sure. I think I said something along the lines of like, don't uh, like trust your gut, something along that, those lines. But like, I would say my best piece of advice is don't be a, don't be afraid to reach out to people who uh like have a lot more experience because the number one most valuable thing in this hobby is experience for sure also don't be afraid to try things yourself like if you're like if you have a if you have a question and you can't find an answer from anybody online try it out yourself if it's not like something harmful obviously mm. make sure it's not harmful like use common sense <laughs> but um yeah 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 if you have a question try it there's no better way to understand your animal and understand how it affects your animal than to try it yourself so i'd say biggest piece of advice is to get all the experience you can talk to all the experienced keepers you can learn as much as you can from firsthand experience yeah yeah 100 percent. learn from people's mistakes um yeah if i do make if i ever get i don't know what i'd have for a logo maybe like <laughs> monitors dressed as like legolas Grimly, <laughs> Aragorn, uh, Frodo, and Gollum. Like, that would what, be awesome. what monitor would be Gollum, though? That's the question. The question is, do I make it my monitors or just monitor species as a general? Hmm. I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know. That's a good question. I'd have to figure that one out. I'd say the Savannah I... monitor would be Gollum. Yeah. Looks so looks so weird. <laughs> and they're, yeah, they're yeah. kind of small, stubby. Yeah. I had a. Oh, I don't know if you know this. It's not a secret. I had a conjoined Aki born. It died, but it's got two heads, two front arms, two tails, and four back legs. Whoa, what the yeah. hell? It's weird, man. That yeah, is I've got it. wild. I've got it in my freezer, so maybe that could be Gollum. Yeah, so, that, that definitely could be. <laughs> a little weird disabled Aki, and it's got two personalities. So One lizard to rule them all. Yeah, I'll make... Gary, I will send you... If I... Oh, God. Oh, God. What the fuck am i doing if i ever do t-shirts i promise i will send you a t-shirt um savannah kind of kind of fits yeah the problem is like right because now obviously the americans the americans some of them are in anyway i don't even know where you're from bam so i'm sorry but like <laughs> as it goes on the americans start to join um and the uk people start to go off so the chat's still popping and i'm like oh stick around but i am going to go off um <laughs> and then the final question is what's the second Piece, best piece of advice you've ever been given because you've already given the best piece of advice back way when um second best piece of advice i've been given um or the best wait so oh, the wait, question maybe... is the best piece of advice you've ever been given but i uh, technically i've already asked you that so oh, okay see, unless yeah, yeah. you've been given better advice i see then um, technically it's the second purely because you've already told me you're first I would say that's probably because I've kind of learned, I've kind of gone to learn that um, more. And it's not someone really directly said it to me. It's just the more I've kind of been talking to people in the community and like having my Instagram and like interacting and stuff. I've really kind of started to realize that myself is like, 
you never are going to know everything like what you were saying, like never be afraid to reach out. I, yeah, I'd say that's probably, that's definitely because things like my green tree, like how it showed up all messed up. Like that's not going to happen if someone just like puts their ego aside and is like, accepts the fact like I'm not an all knowing God and just ask somebody who really knows what they're doing and has been working with them for, and it, it even someone who knows what they're doing. Sometimes it can just be like, something minor and just a little tweak from someone else who's tried it and had better success that can be all they need and just a little push in the right direction. So I just, I think, I think really remembering that the reptile community is a community is very important. Yeah. Come and hang out in the fellowship of Iranus. We'll answer all your questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, there we go, everyone. Any final words speak now forever. Hold your peace. Um, we've been going three hours, 34 minutes and 11 seconds. Uh, God dang. Long one. Um, in a minute, I'm going to end the broadcast. Um, I think you and I will then just go back to where we were. But if we are kicked, because I've only done this twice, once we were kicked, once we weren't. So it's 50 50. Um, because I still don't know how to use the software yet. Then I'm sorry, but thank you very much. <laughs> and yeah. I'll catch up with you anyway. But if we are put back into this, then we can just <clears> say, Thank you very much afterwards. Yeah. Um, but okay, Bam's in Germany. So Bam, what are you, like an hour ahead of me maybe? Um, so you're like, what, 1 a.m.? Half past 12, something like that? Yeah, because um, it's half past 11 here. So, okay. But I'm a bit like you. I don't sleep. I, don't, I won't go to sleep until like 1. So. Yeah, sorry to keep you up this late. No, mate, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be awake anyway, so don't worry about it. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, glad I, I can, beers, glad I can be here. Friend. Yeah, no, appreciate it, though. So everyone who's in chat right now, Oh, I'm dying because I need to sneeze, but I'm not going to sneeze on podcast because I have an ugly sneeze face. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's 12.35. Yeah, look at me knowing the time difference. Um, Riddler's Reptiles is returning for the second return guest next week. So he's part of the chat. And we're, I don't know what we're going to talk about, to be honest, but we're going we're gonna to hang out and talk and interact with you guys. So that's that's the spoiler for next week. And then the week after, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, new video coming out some point next when, next week. I don't know when. Probably my tips and tricks for taming monitors. I don't know. I've got a couple of videos. Or I might do my sexing mangrove video next week. I don't know. We'll find out when I post it. Um, Yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for coming on, Parker. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. thank you, man. It's always a blast being on here. I'm, I, it was, thank you to everybody that tuned in and asked questions. I was... If you ever, uh, if anybody ever wants to reach out, my DMs are always open on Instagram. I always respond, even if it takes me a bit. I promise I will respond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just very, very busy, and it'll probably yeah, yeah. be at like 1 a.m. my time. So I also apologize for that, but it's the only time I have to myself now. So a but, response is a response. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I always, I always respond though. Yeah, man, for sure. That's Thank you so me. much, man. It was it was a blast. I always love talking monitors with you, man. You're doing, it's good, you're isn't doing it? great things out here. <laughs> you're doing great things. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, Bam loves Riddler. Bam, I, I presented you Riddler with the first podcast. I think it's my f- most viewed podcast. I think that's nearly on a thousand views. The Barber Blue one is catching it up, but who knows? Maybe the Parker V2 will surpass them. Watch out. Watch and out. Mike is watching out for part three already. We will get it in the pipeline. When you get the eggs, our fee is still awake. When you get your <laughs> eggs, um, or maybe even even better, when you have your babies. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a long, I'm assuming that's like, what, six months incubation? Yeah, um, uh, five, six months. It's like 160 to 180 days, depending if you keep yeah. it like 83 or 85. <clears throat> Cooler, bigger babies. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, when you have your babies, well, you won't come back on whenever, man. But be, it seems fitting for when you have the babies. Well, um, sounds good to me. But yeah, make sure you post more on Instagram because you don't I post will. enough. I know. I'm sorry, guys. I promise I'll be back to the regular. <laughs> You've the got regular like the coolest soon. stream monitor collection ever. Yeah. And you post a story, and 24 hours later, it's gone forever. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I <laughs> the stories are just so easy to pop up, and it's like when I have to do a reel, I have to like sit down. I have to f- no, type don't. up a thing. You literally, edit. just just post it. Yeah. As you take it, and then just go look how cool my lizards are, because it's better yeah. than nothing. True. Yeah. No, I need. And I need Instagram's to get better. like, oh yeah, every day, every day, every day, every day. Like, yeah. there's a couple of my videos I edit, but for example, that one that's just hit 160 thousand views. That's not. I've only got three videos over 100 thousand views, right? So that's my third one. 
that's just a video that I asked Fee to take anyway because I thought it was cool. Didn't edit it, slapped it on with an audio, adjusted it so the drop worked when the tree monitor bit. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, so you don't have to do less is more when it comes to content on Instagram, 100%. Okay. Just post, just post. Just yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's good to do the odd edited video now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, okay, I'm going to bore chat. So basically, long story short, three to five reels a week minimum. I do a reel every day, but three to five reels a week minimum. Use trending audios for two to three of those. Um, excuse me. Use trending audio for two to three of those. Use original audio to one to two of those. And of the trending audio, do one to two that are under 5K plays. Um, if you really want to play the game, I will send you my hashtags that I use. Then you just have to change the Latin for whatever species you're using. I just use the same hashtags. I copy and paste it in my phone. I just co- post them in the comments. Um but I don't, I don't do all of that. Sometimes I'll, I'll flick through Instagram, and I'll go, "Oh, that's a cool audio." So then I'll use it, regardless if it's trending or not. And sometimes I'll just pick a trending audio and then put a video to it. So I really don't try. Like, I, there's an effort that goes into it, but I'm talking probably takes me about five minutes a day to post a reel. It's fuck all. Damn. So, Damn. Yeah. That's okay, it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll start doing it. It's just I because I always I have to because of how my enclosures are set up and normally what I'll post is feeding videos and to get that I have to get the get the light stand out, set it up. But um yeah, no, I'm I'm done pretty much. So I'm gonna start this week. I, I I've been realizing I need to post one. Um I'll probably post a reel today or tomorrow. Yeah, and yeah. Then, uh yeah, man. I will I will be sure to be be on top of it. And then the YouTube, give me I'm gonna give myself a little extra time. It'll probably be less time, but I'll say give me like three to four weeks and then yeah, yeah. i will have a YouTube once it's out then. tell me and i'll sure. put the i'll put the link in this podcast and then i'll share it for you on my instagram sweet man um, thank you i really appreciate that no no it's cool man at least i can do for chilling with me for three hours 40 minutes and 24 seconds no. um <laughs> all the best of your tree one of the projects parker and we're going to go through these last comments and we are going to wrap this up parker part one was the first podcast I watched from you guys. Well, yeah, because there was only a Parker Part 1. <laughs> now it's Parker Part 2. Mm-hmm. Um, now he's collected all the tree monitors. Looking forward to re-watching this one in the morning. Appreciate you. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, wish the less is more principle applied on YouTube. Uh, to be fair, like, I generally don't think I'm anyone special. I'm just a guy that's honest about lizards. And that's probably because my bloody fucking autism ADHD that I'm going through right now. But anyway... <laughs> um, a lot of people do say to me, like, they don't know how I haven't got more. Um, but I'm incredibly grateful for what I do have. Um, and I'm really proud of my little community that I've built. You know, I don't care for the the 1,360 odd subscribers I don't care for. But the 14 people right now hanging out with us is what I care about. And I like my little fellowship of the Verano. So I, I enjoy it. <laughs> so too, man. It's, it's fun being here. It's good, it's isn't fun. it? Yeah, I, I was it's only going to stick around for one hour. Now I've been now you can nearly four. four. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. But yeah, okay, right, everyone. I am going to end it now. Parker's links are in the description. Check him out. Say I sent you. Um, Parker's part three. Parker's park part three. Good title. Yes, will be in the works. Don't worry. Like I say, Parker, you may or may not be kicked. If you're kicked, I'm sorry. If not, I will see you in about two seconds. <laughs> everyone like the video. Please drop a comment after this. Even if it's just to say thumbs up, it helps my channel amazingly. I don't like plugging it, but apparently you're supposed to. So comment, please. Thank you. Parker, thank you again. Paul has taught me the ways is less is more. You need to stop commenting because I'm ending the goddamn video. Always <laughs> taught me less is more. My animals do better. But I appreciate you, Gary. You still need to send me your pictures of your willy. I feel like that's the perfect place to end it. <laughs> um, everyone, check Parker. Parker, thank you so much for chilling out with me for nearly four hours of your life. I really, yeah, really appreciate your time. Yeah, man. You too. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to everybody for watching. No, I appreciate it. All right, guys, you're doing comment in the wrong place. Comment in the comments. <laughs> Not in the live chat, but thank you. I appreciate you. (laughs) You you can't stop us. I can stop you because I'm about to end the podcast. Anyway, Paul's monitors, Parker's Park, out. Peace.